got there eventually. Window capture, game, okay, yeah, we're good, all right. Boom, boom, boom. So, off the closet, and then I have chat open, streams muted. Oh, all right. How's it going, everybody? Joe, is this game really just another Souls game, or does it have a certain penis to it? It has a lot of penis. It has a lot of penis to it. How's the music? Too loud? October is like three weeks away now. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know, how long is Alan awake? Like three streams, four streams? How long to beat Alan Wake, the game? Uh, Alan Wake is about 11 hours in length. If you're a gamer that strives to see all aspects of the game, you're likely to spend around 26 and a half hours. What? That is a big bump. Is there some sort of new game plus or whatever? Beat it three times for different endings? Collectibles? All right, so 11 hours is probably, probably three streams. And Alan Wake 2 comes out when? Alan Wake 2 comes out on the 27th, so 27th of October, so that is a Friday. All right, so it seems like we could probably safely start on October 23rd or October 24th, and then that will give us three to four days in order to to finish it, and then we're right into Alan Wake 2 on Friday. We'll probably start on Monday just in case, or do you, someone who's played the game, and if you'll play the game, like, do you think three stream days is enough? Have you played Alan Wake 1 before, Joe? I have, but I don't know how far I got. I don't think I got far. I don't think I finished it. It also has two story DLC that are relevant. Is it? Okay, we'll... We'll play that on Monday then. We'll start... Ooh, excuse me, we'll start on October 23rd will be the next stream. That's when we'll do Alan Wake 1, and if we have extra time, we'll have DLC. And if we beat it all really, really fast, then we'll play whatever other game they did on Thursday. Remedy Entertainment. Quantum Break. How long is Quantum Break? How long to beat Quantum Break? Uh, 10 hours. Oh, that's another Alan Wake. Never mind. Oh, excuse me. I just don't want to say about that. Crap. What was it? Oh, you know, I've never played Max Payne 3. I would like to play Max Payne 3. I enjoyed the first two. The second one's better. I heard the third one's even better than that in terms of gameplay, but the story looks pretty bad. Max Payne 3 isn't Remedy though, so isn't it? I thought it was somewhat related to them. Max 
Pain 3 is Rockstar. What's Max Pain 1 and 2 then? So you are Rockstar on Earth, really? What do you think of Liza P? I saw your thoughts right after you finished the game. Have your thoughts changed? No, not yet. I played a little bit of Sekiro this morning, uh, and uh, I died to the first trash pack. Now, when you hear that, you probably mean I died like after getting the hookshot and running through the area and before the first mini boss. No, no, no. I mean the the first trash pack. The first trash pack. I killed the first guy, and they go down. There's those four guys in front of the gate. I died there trying to trying to parry. The parry in Sekiro is, is a little different than the, the, the parry in Liza P. Um, after that, I, I got it back, so it was fine. Um, but yeah, that's where I died. So what I noticed is that in Liza P, you have to parry pretty much on damage received, more or less. But in Sekiro, you have to parry like a, a beat before the damage hits you. Whereas in, in Liza P, it seems like if you hit block as you take damage, it's fine. And I don't know if I like that better or not, but uh, parrying in Sekiro definitely felt easier. You can also just kind of spam the block button and get lucky on getting a bunch of deflections during a string, I think. But I didn't get that far, But so we'll see. I'm just going from memory. I know there were times when I used to play it that I would just be like, oh, the enemy is hitting me a lot. I'm just going to just spam the, the block button now. <laughs> That's why I say I'm not really good at uh, at Sekiro, is because I don't think I um, I don't think I earn a lot of um, a lot of my parries in that game. Anyway, let us do fan art. We have 11 fan arts today. Uh, we're starting off with uh, Luna Panda's uh, Joms suit with dragon body pillow, Dai Katana with Reading Witcher 3. The script is a book. That's all right. Sanus Joe fan, it had to be done. I can't believe I had to download a picture of a fursuit to draw this. That, that's cope. You already had one. You already had a reference for that. Anyway, what will sell out more? Joms Teddy Bear or Joe Pillow? Man, we could open a, a whole storefront with all these ideas. Furries will forever stand as a testament to the indomitable will of, of the human spirit. Imagine going outside in a full mascot costume for hours and not dying of heat stroke. I sweat buckets if it's a little too sunny out. It's just not fair. Who's doing uh, the read today? We, we, we're on number two, not number one, so I don't know who, who this is. So uh, we'll find out when we go back to the first one. Look at all the, like, the, the detailing on the fur there. Uh, I have to say, I am very happy that it's cold today. We finally, we got through summer. I fucking hate summer, my weebs. I hate summer so much. I I don't know if I love fall or if I just love fall because it's no longer summer. I hate summer so much. The mosquitoes go away. There's fewer spiders, although the spiders I'm mostly okay with now. I used to be really afraid of spiders when I was younger, but I'm okay with spiders now. Becoming a dad makes you not afraid of spiders anymore. It's like, a, it's like an upgrade you get. To your pee organ. Um, I hate mosquitoes. Uh, I hate summer so much. This summer wasn't too bad. In my defense, part of the reason why I hate summer is that a lot of the crazies come out in Moncton during the summer. So, like, they're in league with the mosquitoes. So it's pretty cool now, so I'm happy about that. Anyway, let's go back. Thank you, Luna Panda. We will see more of this, I know. Back to... Courtesy of Daxter. Mickey Mouse. Nice. Nice. Hard at work or hardly working, eh, boss? Howdy, hey. Sleepy Jelly here. Oh, it's Jelly! Once again in charge of the Jan Art Showcase. Whether you like it or not, content warning for today's showcase include questionable copyright infringement. You're looking at it. Oh, okay. Preemptive merchandising and 5% weapon damage weapon buffs. And that's just a bunch of pseudo-legal mumbo-jumbo if you ask me, boss. Nice. Nice. How many how many emote slots do you think we could fill up if we had unlimited emote slots? I think we could get easily into the hundreds with all these cool emote ideas that we could have. All the plants in the background too, that's cool. 
<laughs> he actually has boobs. I thought it was just a form-fitting bunny outfit corset, whatever it is, but he actually has boobs. Oh. <laughs> what do you think of Pop Nemo? I'm I'm fond of the emote. It's it's cute. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Sex here. All right, it's getting hot in here already because the computer is making heat and the window's closed. Let me uh, turn the, the air conditioning on. We need to jamify and add it. Oh, no, I, I'm behind on everything, including emotes. I'm pretty sure there's a couple fan artists, one of them might have even been Merrick, that was like, hey, I would really like to make an email, and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds good, and then I just never responded to them ever again. <laughs> you shouldn't lull that, that's bad, it's bad. Maybe I should offload some work onto Lily. Maybe I should be like, Lily, you're your secretary, Lily, now, and like just answer all my DMs. Anyway, thank you, Dexter. I, I miss him so much, chat. I miss Mickey so much. And then we're back to, to Luna Panda. Jelly said to, to zoom in on the. Oh, yeah, alright. Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you, thank you. And, and there's uh, part two of this. Here we go. Three, two, one. <gasps> it was it was Tifa all along. Actually, it's just kind of in the Tifa area. Tifa, Tifa. Also, courtesy of Luna Panda, it was a waifu all along. There is a chain inside every one of us. Of course, every furry has their limits, I assume. If you, yes you, would like to get in touch with your inner Chan, feel free to pop into the Joseph Anderson Discord server and start chatting in Dragon's Den. You should see the results in as little as one brisket guilty gear profile picture change. <sighs> this is me one day on, on in Dragon's Den. This is me, two days in Dragon's Den. Ooh woo, this is me, one week in Dragon's Den. Phew. Yeah, I got, I got to admit, I don't... I don't see the appeal of wearing a, a full body suit for a lot of reasons, but... High on the list is the humidity, like the heat. Like, I've worn a Halloween mask. Uh, I have a rooster one, um, which I like to uh, I like to put on. And um, the kids are scared of it. I wonder if they're going to be scared of it this year. Um, <laughs> and I, whenever I put it on, I say to Lily, "Hey, look, I'm a big cock." Anyway, and th even that is like, uh, like it's too hot. Like it's like it's suffocating. I don't I don't like having uh, like like a mask on. Never mind like a, a full suit on. Poor Lily, she loves it. She laughs every time. Joe's coxona. That's from Sarah. What? I'll use my coxona. So is furry is a chicken? Wouldn't that be a feather feathery at that point, or does it have a different different one? Let's put different music on. Let's put uh the other one on. Let's turn it down a little bit more just in case. Anyway, thank you, Luna Panda, for these two. Next one is. Courtesy of Paddle. You know what? I'm disappointed in chat after it was revealed when he said his name that his name was Manus. That no one made the is it is it Pi or Manus or or some other version of that. 
uh, with the last boss yesterday. The frog part hates being the anus. <laughs> the microphone. Uh, Kay here, summoned by Jelly. Thank you so much, Paddle, for drawing this. I'm glad to see it in art form. That boss really was incredible to watch. Hypnotic. I have been so proud that everyone immediately began to refer to them by that. It's a really catchy name, Pius or Anus. Someone did, oh did they, and I missed it. I think visually that might have been my favorite boss. It was so cool. I wish there had been, I know there were some more monster bosses later in the game, but I feel like they peaked with design early on that one. I, maybe something else like that later on would have been good again. But you know, now I'm asking for more bosses. Do you think this will get DLC? Do you think the uh, Lies of Oz will be DLC or a whole ass other game? Hmm. I like the design of Manus. Yeah, I did too, but it felt just like a, a monster humanoid rather than a monster beast monster. I think Swamp and this one were the only two major beasts, right? Or major monster monsters. Please be a new girl where you, a new a new game where you play a little girl with a huge weapon. I think that that I think I would like Alice in Wonderland Souls more than Wizard of Oz, but I think Wizard of Oz would be a really compelling concept too. Also, instead of having a homeward bone, you just tap your red your ruby slippers together, and, and that makes you go back to the to the bonfire. Gotta be right. Gotta be. If the game comes out and you don't do that to get back, I will be upset, because they missed the beat if that's not the case. So much potential, for real, for real. Is Wizard of Oz public domain? Wizard of Oz. 1939 film. Wizard of Oz is a musical fantasy film produced by Metro Goldwyn Mayer, an adaptation of L. Frank, ba L. Frank Baum's 1900s children's fantasy novel, The Wizard of Oz. The, sorry, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. When did it come out? Oh, it's Dead, Dead Nuts on 1900. Okay. That's gotta be public domain now, right? Interesting. Interesting. I'm surprised we don't see more Wizard of Oz themed content then. I wonder if it's because most people think of the movie and the movie might not be in public domain yet. Because, just because source material might be in public domain, someone else's version built on that source material might not be. Hmm. Anyway, thank you Paddle. I really like this. This is good. I like the microphone. I like this, the singing pious and the upset anus because it's like cat dog. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, courtesy of Merrick Bentuzzi, since the boss is now past tense, I tweaked the ending a bit with different voice lines. Oh, there, it's, uh, it's, uh, hold on, let me pause it. There's a, there's a sound. Hold on. Let me see, is it loud enough? Alright, well, it's another, like... Alright, is that loud enough, or do I need to turn it up? A little louder? Okay. Alright, well, it's another, like, visually... Is that better? Yeah? Alright, well, it's another, like, visually stunning boss. Like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this the expression. It's humanoid, but fuck, 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 fuck. No, no, no. Oh, God. Fuck, no. No. I can't overstate how intoxicatingly difficult it was. Oh! Nice kill. Holy shit! Oh, there are, there are credits to this! Well, this isn't making it to the YouTube VOD. <sighs> Actually, it might. Hold on, maybe it will. But should I play it again, muted? And we'll... Nah, it's fine, let's play it again. Alright, well, it's another, like, visually... I like boss. this this expression. Yeah, I don't know how he's gonna do mechanically. It's humanoid, but fuck, what? <laughs> oh, no, no, no! Oh, God! Fuck, no! No! I can't overstate how intoxicatingly difficult it was. Nice kill. Holy shit. 
Which boss did I die the most on? It, it was that one, wasn't it? I think that took me three hours. Right? It was three hours. Two and a half to three hours for King of Puppets, I think. And then Manus took me an hour, 90 minutes. Laxa, 60 minutes. Uh, Pius or Anus took about an hour too, right? I think so. I think so. Is there a new game today or just some replaying? Uh, we're going to play some Lies of P and we might play some Sekiro. But that's it. That's all on the docket today. We're going to go through some some new game plus. Thank you, Merrick. This is the past tense version. Go join Merrick's Discord or something for the non-tweaked version. And I hear there's even more attractions there that you can see on Merrick's Discord. I've never been myself, you know, would always like to. Clearly, the uh, on my alt account, clearly the true reason that Joe was able to one-trip the final boss was that he didn't buff his weapon and activate his true gameplay power. Did I? I didn't, did I? Let this be a lesson to all aspiring mirror match bosses in the audience. Don't discount the intimidation factor of applying a subtle yet stylish elemental buff. Ooh. Ooh. The forbidden text. Life's Incredible, again, is the Disney track, by the way. Have fun with that. What, what's that? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Oh, man. Let me turn that a little bit. He loves copyright bullshit. Loves it. Loves it. Anyway, thank you, Merrick. I'm, I'm very fond of this uh, vintage-looking Joe here. Very fond. Okay, now it's too loud for me. Let me put down. Courtesy of Jelly, when your weird cousin comes over and you have to share, <laughs> you have to share her stuff, your stuff with her. <laughs> oh man! Imagine not knowing who this is. Imagine. Oh, she would like this weapon. What? Uh. Why? Why? <laughs> uh. What? What? Did they? Did, oh, they're shit. They shared clothes too. Oh, okay, I see. I see. All right. When your weird cousin comes over and you have to share your stuff with her. Listen, I know what it looks like, but consider the following evidence. Both have 5% weapon buff, true gameplay powers. True. Both are tended to by plot-relevant waifus imbued with the power of a vital energy source slash plot device, uh, Io Sophia. Both of them are adjacent to robot maids. 2B was the other option, if trash tan didn't get chosen. The more de, de resistance, both of them have their sights set on glowing pink butterflies, and and they both have a home base where you collect like jazz records that you play. You know what? I don't even think I don't even think that Liza P. The developers didn't even play Dark Souls. They played Code Vein. This is a Code Vein like. They don't even know what Dark Souls is. Code Vein was actually, and I know it may not look it, because again, anime rainbow rainbow vomit. Code Vein was actually pretty good. Code Vein, as much as it hurts to say it, is in the upper tier of Souls like not made by From. It was actually pretty good. Like, the, it felt pretty good to play, it has some stuff going on, level design enemy variety is severely lacking, I think, but some of the boss fights are, were, were decent, it was fun. The character creator alone was so impressive. Have they added the ability to import codes for your for the character creator in Code Vein? They should have done that, so you can steal someone else's character online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Old Joe would never say that. Old Joe was the one who played it! Code Vein release date. When did it come out? 2019. Oh my god. Where does the time go? Is Code Vein 2 coming out? Is it already out? Code Vein 2. There won't be a Code Vein 2 because Code Vein was just a one and done project made by Bandai Namco aimed at milking Soulsborne fans the final time given how at the time From Software was done with Dark Souls. What? Who, who's who's saying this? Oh, this is just a this is just someone riffing on Steam in the Steam community. How is this the top Google fucking answer?
the authority that this weeb had just from answering a question on fucking Steam. Holy shit. Anyway, thank you, Jelly. It was nice to see Trash Chan again. Also courtesy of Dax here, Chatter who said something kind of dumb and not well thought out and read- <laughs> That is the message Joe reads, Chan. This is a very specific chant. What are you talking about, chatter? I will never chat again. Speech to text microphone, <laughs> and then there's like a robot hand that types it. That's cute. I like that. Uh, she's becoming like a, um, a Nightmare Before Christmas character. Remember to properly cite your sources during online arguments in Twitch chat so as to ensure that the dragon is chat do not verbally eviscerate your unfounded opinion. If you make sure to properly attribute your sources, you may get off easy when the mods delete your message for containing a link. Ah, that's nice. And to think we're one of the more accepting communities on the platform. For some high quality Google featured answers, try Googling why is Google Maps low contrast? All right. Why is Google Maps low contrast? <laughs> Answer. The design team at Google Maps has no concept of attaining visual clarity through the prop through use of proper contrast in their choice of color and shading. This from the Google Help Support site. <laughs> is, is this a is this a game you could play? Why is Elden Ring so hard? Elden Ring follows a trend set by From Software in their Souls series of games with its high level of difficulty. Due to a few key reasons, this entry is the most accessible game to date. The main reasons for this lie is this lie in the wealth of wait the main reasons oh re, re, okay the the main reasons for this lie in the wealth of combat options provided to suit the many dangerous situations you may come across. All right, reading's hard. Why do millennials? Eat so much ass. No, there's no there's no answer for that one. Oh, I spelled millennials wrong. I really am a millennial. There you go. New music. There was a there was another lion clip that popped up on my YouTube feed today, and he got pretty raunchy on on stream. I was surprised he was he was talking about like if if Brokeback Brokeback Mountain met Apollo 13. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And like he was like explicitly descriptive of like what he thought that movie should be. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And I'll look, holy shit. <laughs> he also talked about a tweet that was so funny. Uh, <laughs> gay Neil Armstrong tweet. Hold on, where was it? It was so fucking funny. <sighs> oh, I can't find it. He, he, the, the clipper had it on the, uh, on the screen. <laughs> It was, it was something like, for, first was like, your fears, no one likes you, your, your anxiety, like, uh, you're gonna fail at life, and it was... <laughs> Tiny penis gay Neil Armstrong saying, that's a small cock for me, but a giant dick for my ass. <laughs> It was so funny, and that planted the seed in his head, I guess, of like fucking like Apollo 13 meets Sprung Pack Mountain. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Hold on, let me drag it into the into the into the chat. <laughs> Do 
do do do do. Here you go. <laughs> Anxiety. What if you're not good enough? Messages. Depression. Everyone hates you. Gave me large strong. The small penis. <laughs> That's one small cock for me and one huge cock for my ass. Well, I don't know either, but it's really funny. <laughs> anyway, thank, thanks NL for exposing me to that. Oh, imagine not finding this funny. <sighs> Hate it when Gay Neil Armstrong is in my DMs. He's everywhere, man. He's so prolific. So prolific. <sighs> anyway, next one. Thank you, Dexter. <laughs> Shit, it's a comic. Hold on. Courtesy of uh Krakoni? Krakonis? Krakonis? Crack Onis? Chat. Alright, Mr. Anderson. It's been a year and a half since you were convicted of harassing from software with unsolicited advice. Since then you've appealed you have appealed for your sentence to be reduced <laughs> reduced from death to hmm, nothing. Hmm, interesting. What is your case? What what is what are these tattoos? What the fuck? Uh, I, I, all I did was give constructive criticism. I think that is well within my rights as a critic. Furthermore, okay, I've heard enough. Guilty. True. Very true. Very true. Well, you didn't even hear my case. I've I've heard enough to know you're guilty. La my. <laughs> you know what? Fuck yeah, I'm guilty, and I do it again. You sons of. Bi the witness is getting violent. Hit him with the tranquilizer. And then, and then he's passed to, passed to. You know what? This, this would happen in, uh, in an Ace Attorney case. Leon on the shirt, nice. Angry Dragon, ooh, really angry dragon. What is going on with the judge's ears here? Evil Wuggy Judge. Oh, it's, it's smiley face chat ears. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I wish I was that jacked. Holy crap. Holy crap. Inspired by Joe's decision, uh, dis sorry, discussion about From Software fanboys and the lives of peace dreams, I made my first ever piece of fan art art in general. Prison Joe. Oh, it's Prison Joe. You criticize FromSoft? You criticize FromSoft without using throwing knives during every Elden Ring boss? Oh, oh, ban for streamer. Permanent ban for streamer for 10 entire seconds. I think it is a, it's a permanent ban from uh, some people taking me seriously in any subsequent video ever again. Oh, man. Oh, man. We did talk about it a little bit too much, but at, in in my defense, like, I have to stop saying like, in my defense, it's a it's a souls like it's relevant, you know. It was people were bringing it up quite a bit, and also the discourse around the game was often being called back to the FromSoft games. I think that most of the the posts I've seen have usually been prefaced by, you know, I've beat every other game without using summons, but this game's kicking my ass, so clearly it's the game's pro fault, not mine, because I've played the other games, and it's, uh, I don't know, like, maybe it's a bunch of people that have only, that only played Elden Ring, and they don't understand, because some people went through this with Dark Souls 2, I think. A lot of people played Dark Souls 1, got their ass handed to them, didn't learned from it, grew from it, then played Dark Souls 2 and got their ass handed to them again and they couldn't accept it. They couldn't accept that all their skills weren't transferring over from Dark Souls 1. And they weren't being fair to themselves because some of their skills did transfer over and didn't realize if they hadn't played Dark Souls 1 they would be getting their ass kicked even more. And it's the same when Dark Souls 3 comes out, and when Dark Souls 3 comes out, now it's like a trend. It's like, okay, I understand now. Like, experience counts for a lot, but you do have to go through a learning process again of learning all the, how the intricacies of the differences in this game, and also how, like, the fights and everything. So I think maybe a lot of people started with Elden Ring, and they're going over to this one, and they're not they're not adjusting well. Although, maybe that's just cope, I don't know. Anyway, we, we're doing it again! We're doing it again! You got me monologuing again! God damn it. I like Ace Attorney memes. Thank you, Kirkonis. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Do, do, do. <laughs> Next one, three, two, one. Oh my God. Courtesy of Chrome, Chrome Dollar. Here's a fanner of Joe as a mix between enemies and the protagonist from Lies of P. No joke, no funny haha. Just thought it would be cool. It does look fucking cool. 
Hey Chrome, this fucking rules. Holy shit! What the fuck? Chrome is flexing. God damn. Didn't even find a way to strategically hide the hand. It's there and it's gripping the weapon. It's there. Boom. Done. Holy shit. I think that's as big as we can get the whole thing in. Yeah, there we go. Holy fuck. Are we wheeling today? We're not wheeling today, no. No wheels today. I love the front of the face looking like a, like a car. Yeah, because Critic Joe always drives his points home. Yeah? Can we read or utilize the beat? Yeah, I would like to. We might do that before we start playing. I'm getting minus twos all the time lately. What the hell? Used to like puns. She's genuinely such a good artist. I, whoops. I love her stuff. She drew my profile pic. We have a, a lot of fantastic artists that we really don't deserve here. Or at least I don't deserve them. <laughs> Like, holy shit, man. Chat has evolved to these these myths jokes. What's these myths? So this is last year for a bit. Just wanted to say thank you for all the content over the years. Your vids and streams has helped me through so much over the past X years. However many since Edith Finch. Oh man, I, I don't know off the top of my head. That's It's been four years since that, hasn't it? Five? I hope you and your family have a wonderful day. Oh, thank you. As a ma as a Mazeltov, I think I'm saying that right. Has it been more than five? We were still back in Toronto with the Edith Finch video, weren't we? Maybe it's been six. God damn. Best art in a, in a video game? That's a tough one. Depends on the different styles you're going for, right? Like, for some reason, Ori came to mind, but sometimes Ori looks weird in its enemies. Ori is just a gorgeous game. It's going to be really hard to, to to choose. How did Lies of P have so many boss fights, and Armored Core Six had like four? I wish that it had more boss fights. Maybe they thought the the mech on mech kind of thing would have been better. You know, like another another pilot, that sort of thing. Anyway, thank you, Chrome. This is just absolutely stunning. Holy crap! Holy crap! Anyway, uh, we're nine nine of eleven, so two more. One, two, three. Oh, why did? Okay. All right. Pause the music. Also courtesy of Merrick Bentuzzi. Sure, you might be imbued with the literal touch of the divine. You know what? Let's uh let's watch it first. Hold on. Tom Cart Oh, this is gonna get copyright claimed again. Alright, let me turn it up. It is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. <laughs> Alright, is it loud enough? Disney and Tom can fight over the VOD. Let them fight. Let them fight. No? Very quiet. All right, I'll I'll max it then. It's a it's at zero decibels. It is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. Tolkien. But all right, how about? <laughs> it is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. Tolkien. But can you tell us a bit about this next book? They walk, 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 walk. Kick him in the eye. You shall not fuck with me. Ah! <laughs> wow, 
well done well done i i love this song um Lily also loves it. I think it's Lily's favorite uh, from Tom Cardi is that one. Uh, and so the kids have heard a lot too. So whenever I'm out with the boys and we're going a long distance, uh, we sing this song when we're walking too, lo too much. She's like, we walk, 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 walk. They sing it all the time. Anyway, let's watch it a couple more times. Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the It's My Book, The Walk If I Tell Them To. I thought maybe it was going to be part of my reading in this. I'm glad that it didn't. All right, here we go. It is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. Tolkien, but can you tell us a bit about this next book? They walk, 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 walk. Kick him in the eye. You shall not fuck with me. <laughs> the P sounds so good. All right, one more time. It is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. Tolkien. But can you tell us a bit about this next book? They walk, 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 walk. Kick him in the eye. You shall not fuck with me. Damn, damn. Sure, you might be imbued with the literal touch of the divine, but uh, all right. I'll be honest. I've never seen or read Lord of the Rings. I can't riff with no material, folks. Maybe I'll take a, a walk and think on it for about seventy pages. Yep, seventy pages is a bit light to describe a walk. I, I loved when during the reading of uh, Lord of the Rings page, I, I don't know which, it was one of the mods I think, I don't know who was in chat, was like, ooh, you get a line of dialogue. <laughs> it was so much reading until finally someone fucking spoke. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you, Merrick. This was, this was amazing. Chat loved it too. Holy shit. P nice. And a hat trick courtesy of Daxter. The mental image was too funny not to draw it. Aw shucks. Oh Merrick's here again. Aw shucks. Man, you know I was so upset when I broke it. Do you just have a garden full of switches and steam decks sticking out of the ground like gravestones? Well, that's why I have this. Aw. And by the end of it, maybe I could make a, a cemetery of all, all the broken uh, handhelds. <sighs> the Joy-Con. The Joy-Cons don't last, man. How? I, I, under, I know that the N64 analog sticks also started to have problems later on, especially third-party ones, but they lasted quite a while. The Joy-Cons are just so much worse. What happened? I broke my Steam Deck a while ago. Why'd you break them so much? I, I, like, we don't do it intentionally. They just, they're just not made very well. The charging ports break on them for the most part. One time, in fact, it's more than one time. So I don't know how I did this, right? So the charging ports on the, on the switch lights break. So what I do sometimes is that I just assume that maybe they've gotten wet or, or something. So I will just hold them up to a space heater for a, for a while and then that usually fixes it. There's been like two or three that I've gotten a couple month, extra months of use out of and that fixed the charging port problem and then they'll start charging again after I do that. I don't know why. There was also Leo switch broke, switch light broke a while ago, so I I got him a new one and then when the new one arrived, I I on a whim, I like tried the old one one last time and it charged. And I'm like, "Oh, I'm like, okay, it fixed itself in the days since this took to get here. So here you go, have it back, kid. Like, I tried for, like, days and days and days to see if it would charge. And all of a sudden it was working again. So, and then and then it finally did break permanently, like, a couple months later after that. So he had his new one. How do you discover that? I assume that there was something in it had gotten wet. That they had, like, um, uh, gotten some, some juice on it or something. So I just hold it up to the heater to see if it would work. That was after, like, l leaving it alone for a couple days, charging it, trying different chargers, trying different outlets. That was, like, the last effort. It was, like, I'll just hold it up to the heat and see if that'll help. And, and it did. It, it, it fixed it. So, yeah. The best thing you can ever do, if you, you, if you ever have something that, that breaks... The best thing you can do is just take it apart and put it back together again. And sometimes that will fix it. Like, honest to God, like, that fixes so many things. Just in the same way, if a computer is acting funny, just turn off and back on again. Or to any anything electronic, turn it off and back on again. But if it, only, if it won't even start and it won't even charge, sometimes just take it apart and put it back together. Like, something's loose, you know? Something like that. Anyway, thank you, Dex, here. 
This is a, this is a funny image. I agree. Uh, anyway, let us let us go through it again, and I'll play Merrick's videos again too because they're short, and that's why I didn't put the music back on. So here we go. I will be silent. I will not laugh the whole time. I will not laugh. Here we go. It's another like visually stunning boss. Like I don't know how he's gonna be mechanically. It's humanoid. We're fucked. What? No, 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 no! Oh god! Fuck no! No! I can't overstate how intoxicatingly difficult it was. Nice kill! Holy shit! ASMR fan art showcase. It is very exciting to be in a room with you, Mr. Tolkien. But can you tell us a bit about this next book? They walk, 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 walk. Kick him in the eye. You shall not fuck with me. All right, I made it. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the real indie farming sim, hardware repairs. You know who else cultivates a rich lifestyle through hard work, dedication, and technolo technological manipulation? Our lovely fan artists. Thank you, as always, for your endless skill and creativity. This is it until uh, some Alan guy wakes up for something. A little late to bring back Persona 4 stream memes, but who am I to judge the dragon? Ooh. Alan. Alan. Do you think I could call it Anal Wake? Uh, 1 and 2 for when we get there? Would that title fly? Twitch's Terms of Service? Probably not, right? Yeah, we could do it. We could get away with it. Do you think so? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, fan artist. I mean, if they don't want that word in their titles, they should just make it so I, it, it errors out when I try to make that the title, right? If anything, it's on them. Do 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 Okay, I think we'll play the game a little bit and then we'll read some reviews. Or do you want to read reviews first? How many reviews are we gonna read? Let's get the game like on because then we can have some uh, some Liza P background music at least. Liza P. Did you finish the game? Yeah, we finished it yesterday. I killed the last boss first try. First try. I'm so impressed with myself. This was such a good game. I agree, it was a really good game. <clears throat> Favorite Tom Cardi song and why is it Party Dog? I don't like Party Dog that much. It's all right. My favorite is a song that I like to listen to fairly often is probably the Level Clear one. I like it a lot. It has a really good beat to it. It's an actual song. It's very entertaining. I also like the message to it as well. Um, but for like the song that absolutely goes the hardest and has no right to do it is Monster Truck. The, the middle of Monster Truck is like 20 seconds of that is like some of my favorite music ever. It is so fucking catchy. It has no right to go that hard. Alright, we're continuing, right? Level clear is really good. 
You know what? Let's just have the, the main menu on and while we read reviews. All right. So what? Do we want to start with user reviews or do we want to read the infamous IGN review? Lies of P, IGN. All right. Let's go. IGN apparently thinks the game is too easy. And I'm going to do... And if I feel like they make a compelling case, I already have it in my head what experiment I'm going to do to, to see how they could have come to this conclusion. All right. So 8 out of 10 by Travis Northup. How is the sound, by the way? It's way too loud, isn't it? It's at fucking, like, zero. There we go. That's better now, right? Okay, so this is the IGN review. If you would like to read along... Am I allowed to read reviews on, on, on stream? I guess so, right? Are reviews copyright in the same way? I mean, everyone can go and look at it. I, I guess it's fine. All right. You know we've entered a new era of in the increasingly crowded Souls-like arms race when we're now turning classic children's stories into dark, twisted, bloodborne pseudo-sequels, but hey, here we are. Yes, Lies of P is yet another game inspired by the dark and under unforgiving From Software masterpieces that have captured the hearts of so many, myself included, but it's also an undeniably impressive standout amid a sea of games. Should we put it on the screen? Lies of P review. All right, there we go. All right, you can see it, right? We're all good? <clears throat> Where were we? Here? Yes, Lies of P is yet another game inspired by the dark and unforgiving From Software masterpieces that have captured the hearts of so many, myself included, but it's also an undeniably impressive standout amid a sea of games chasing the Souls-like trend. It suffers from some uneven difficulty and overly linear level design, but its impressive story, ex ex extremely well-tuned combat, and memorable areas and boss fights mean that this isn't one you should miss out on. It's fair to say that sometimes Lies of P emulates its inspiration so closely that it feels like someone else is pulling its strings a little too forcefully, but that puppet show is still a whole lot of fun to watch so this kind of writing is fairly common in reviews i do it too sometimes and it's really hit or miss i don't think it works here but you know catch me on a different mood i'd be like it yeah. you know what i mean um like yeah i don't know why I, I say this as someone who who writes these kind of articles and essays there's just something kind of it's a, either like a, a trap that we fall into or it's just we want to be a little smarmy for a bit but yeah, we, we do this sort of thing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, it's both praise and criticism to say that Lies of P follows the blueprint pioneered by From Software down to its finest detail. Uh, I said that wrong. With precious few deviations. The UI and menus are strikingly similar to every Souls-like you've ever played. Mm, the aesthetic is almost identical to Bloodborne, and combat is a methodical dance of attacks and parries designed with difficulty in mind. It sticks so close to the script that it got to the point where I'd meet a sim seemingly friendly character and think, ah, this is the one who's going to betray me later, with full confidence that I, that I was spot on in that assessment. What? There's even a major boss with the same name and rough appearance as a Dark Souls boss, which is honestly just kinda hilarious. In fact, this isn't even the first Eurocentric souls like featuring murderous marionettes. Almost exactly one year ago, I reviewed Steel Rising, which has a bizarre number of things in common with Lies of P. I have never heard of that game. From its mechanical enemies gone mad to its trendy and historical urban setting, thankfully, Lies of P is a much better game and manages to stand out in other ways, but it doesn't exactly earn a whole lot of points for originality. One of the ways it does set itself apart, though, is with its story, which is a dark reimagining of Carlo Col Collodi's, am I saying his name right by the way? Collodi's Pinocchio, a story about a mischievous puppet known for telling falsehoods and longing to become a real boy. Lies of P's version takes a lot of liberty with its much more gory and depressing version of the classic tale, but it's got some nice nods to its inspiration, including an untrustworthy cat and fox and a neat mechanic where you have to choose to tell lies or the truth, which have an impact on the outcome of your adventure. I wonder how much impact that has on it actually. Um, 
The style of game isn't known for having the most comprehensible stories, and Lies of P isn't wholly an exception to that rule, but it does try more than most. There's a whole bunch of dialogue and cutscenes that kept my interest throughout my first 30 hour run instead of just a loose collection of vagaries and hints in item descriptions. In fact, of all the distressing and enigmatic stories I've seen in this genre, this is definitely among one of my favorites. Not quite as relatable and polished as something like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, but certainly more approachable than your Bloodborns or your your Dark Souls. It's got some interesting twists and turns and a few memorable characters too, like the self-obsessed so socialite Vanini, who constantly made me want to speak in an over-the-top Italian accent. As you'd expect, you'll split your time hacking your way through levels where practically everything in sight... Yeah, I know, right? I, I, I know. Uh, everything in sight wants to kill you and taking on much more formidable bosses, and Lies of P largely nails both of the, those genre pillars. The city of Krat is memorable and dystopian, while also continuously reminding you that you're playing out an iconic fairy tale about puppets. It comes complete... Okay, with your cricket sidekick Gemini and your puppet-making father Geppetto, who always reminds you to be a good boy right before he sends you on missions to butcher everyone in your path. You'll visit a puppet graveyard that serves as a kind of poison swamp level that every souls like legally is required to include, that's true, yep, and an exhibition hall filled with hopeful depictions of a future that clearly didn't work out quite as planned, among others. Each is thoroughly enjoyable to stab your way through. It's a little disappointing though, Lies of P is far more linear than most, than most similar games, I agree with this. With a very very straightforward path from beginning to end and no significant optional areas uh, or boss fights aside from the odd side quests that send you back someplace you've already visited to solve a small puzzle in exchange for a new outfit or upgrade material. That said, is there any is there any souls like not made by From that isn't just linear corridors? Code Vein was linear corridors. Ashin had some open areas but then led to linearity after that. Um, Surge was, Surge 1 is, is very, is very, uh, linear. Hollow Knight, I'm talking more about the, the 3D perspective Souls Likes. Neo 1 is level based. Neo 2, I haven't played enough. I think it's also mission based, isn't it? Neo has side quests, yeah, but they're all just dump you in a level. Sometimes it's a remix version of the level. You start from a different, a different area and go through it backwards, right? Hellpoint is non-linear and you can do a lot of areas in order you want. Oh, can you? We should go back and play Hellpoint. Even Sekiro is very line linear compared to Souls. Eh, I think Sekiro... Sekiro is like Dark Souls 3 to me, in terms of where you can go. Dark, so Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro are, are similar in my mind, in where you can go and how you can loop around. Dark Souls 2... Eh, you have some choice in Dark Souls 2. Anyway, let's continue. Um, where were we? Once you've played through the through story, you'll more or less have seen and done everything there is to see and do, except to do it again on New Game Plus, of course. Another item on the checklist is some memorable and usually disgusting boss fights, and Liza P's got Liza P's got those in spades. From an evil puppet law enforcement official to a hulked out guy who's basically just Bane from Batman, there's lots of big things that need to be slapped in the face. Doing so is always enjoyable, even though they're all pretty straightforward encounters where you whittle down the enemy's health bar. It would have been nice to have one or two encounters where they mix things up with a puzzle or trick you've got to figure out out to best your opponent. Those are always my favorite. Well, I mean, there was one of those in here, and you're not mentioning it, so that's weird. Hmm. Aggressive, maybe you didn't realize that was it? If you go in, like, I think the first time you target that boss, it's on its leg. Okay, so I, I subjectively very much disagree with this, but I see that, I know that some people do enjoy those kind of fights, and the game is lacking in those kind of gimmick fights, yeah. Also, almost all the bosses have two phases, which I'm normally a fan of. Do they? If you count the phase change at 50%, they do. Almost all the bosses have two phases, which I'm normally a fan of, but they're used to the point where it became a little grating by the end. I disagree. I think I thought they got better at the end about with this. Usually the first phase is quite easy, but when the second phase is repeatedly killing me and I have to re keep replaying that first phase until I'm completely bored by it, I kind of just wish I could skip it and get to the part that's actually fun and challenging. Many fights felt like they put the first phase there just as a warm-up round uh, before getting to the actual meat of the encounter, but rest assured, by the tenth attempt, I was thoroughly warmed up and plenty ready to take another shot at the real boss. I think two phase fights always work better when it's the same entity that you're fighting 
it feels cheap and frustrating when you have to kill a whole ass boss and then it's another boss right after that has a completely different move set so i'd say i like puppet of kings but if i was even more stuck on puppet of kings having your king of puppets uh, Puppet of Kings is what it'd be called if it was made by FromSoft, huh? Uh, King of Puppets, but having Romeo be like a completely new moveset after that is not the best. But I think it works there, but it might not have if I kept doing it. This is Cope? What do you mean? What's Cope? I'm waiting for, for an answer. What's Cope? What's Cope? For better or worse, much of Lies of Peace combat draws clear inspiration from Bloodborne specifically with a couple minor tweaks. Does it? You can't restore health loss from direct attacks by striking back at your enemies like in Bloodborne, but you are given the ability to partially block some of that incoming damage then counter to restore the chip damage you absorbed. The result is a, is a similar meta where aggressive gameplay is encouraged, and that keeps fights moving along at a quick pace, but it also discourages more defensive playstyles, which tend to be my go-to in Souls likes. What? That feisty combat is extremely fun, balanced, and well-tuned, but you're definitely boxed into playing in a specific way instead of allowing you the freedom to craft diverse builds, like a ranged magic user in Dark Souls, for example. Okay, well, I didn't mess around with the Legion arm, so I'm not sure about that. I, I would like an example, please. This is why I like examples. What are you talking about? Another idea bar, bar from Bloodborne is that your melee weapon is assigned to your right hand, while your left is reserved for a utility weapon that often that often include range capabilities by turning your robotic arm, left arm, into a Winter Soldier as a <laughs> tool of destruction, and that ends up being a pretty darn clever take on that mechanic. You might decide to close gaps quickly with the quick and effective puppet string, which lets you tether a grappling hook onto your enemies, or make use of the formidable falcon eyes to turn your arm into a cannon and blow up the ranged puppets from afar, or my personal favorite, use the Aegis shield to block incoming attacks and dish out damage in kind of a fiery explosion that triggers when it's hit. It's especially cool that each of these tools uh, can be upgraded with additional effects, like the Puppet Strings ability that lets you follow up follow up your grappling hook maneuver with a devastating airborne attack. But it's the new stuff, namely the completely awesome weapon crafting system that lets you disassemble any weapon in your arsenal and mix and match the various hilts and blades to create Frankenstein abominations, that really lets Lysa P distinguish itself with, within a very crowded genre. Have you ever wanted to attach a giant saw blade to a rapier's handle so you could jab with it like you're fencing? Well, it's probably not advisable at all, but knock yourself out. How about attaching Molnir's hammer to the end of, of a rusty pipe? Another Marvel reference. Go for it, man. You do you. With dozens of possible combinations, you're given quite a bit of freedom to make s some silly or surprisingly effective stuff, as certain stats and abilities from your chosen hilt and blade combine for a unique combat experience. It's a bit of, of a shame, though, that the best weapons available are legendary tools that can't be disassembled and reforged into new items and many of these are so much more powerful than anything you can build that you're sort of disin disincentivized from actually engaging with the crafting system the longer you play. With all that freedom to create silly weapon combinations, it's a bit disappointing that there aren't any of the multiplayer modes you find in many of Lies of P's peers. Not having co-op is understandable since it might break any semblance of balance, plus who wants to see two Pinocchios wailing on a boss anyway? I do. But PvP in particular seems like it would fit perfectly with the fast-paced con contest of reflexes at which Lies of P excels. Maybe we'll get something like that as DLC, but for now you'll you'll need to enjoy your neat builds and creative weapon combinations on your lonesome. Yeah, I don't think this is a necessary inclusion for this kind of game. I think a lot of people like the PvE aspect of these games, and adding PvP is a whole box of frogs that you might not want to deal with. Like, as an added inclusion, cool, whatever, but I wouldn't hold it against any of these games if they don't include PvP. Like, that's... That's a big project, adding PvP. Another cool tweak on the formula is Lies of Peace skill tree, which lets you upgrade your puppet's mechanical innards to snap up some seriously useful upgrades, like adding amulet slots to your loadout, gaining additional pulse cells that are used for healing, and increasing the number of consumable, consumable throwing objects you can carry on your person. I spent way too long agonizing over each upgrade decision and considering different ways to optimize my build to improve my chances of becoming a real boy, and that was a pretty nice change of pace in between all those unfortunate murders I had to commit. How, how long is this? Oh, wow. All right, we're somewhat close to the end. Of course, the main thing that defines any good souls like is how soul-crushingly difficult it is, and Lysa P has mixed success in this regard. Here we go. On one hand, nearly all of the world exploration where I was fighting your run-of-the-mill evil puppets and gross monsters was disappointingly easy. What? To the point where death it was a rare occurrence throughout my playthroughs. What? Some of the hardest fights were between the bosses, where they throw the glass cannon, like, holy shit, I'm gonna kill you in two hits, good luck parrying. 
The same can be said of most boss fights, where which Souls veterans can expect to beat without breaking too much of a sweat, since they're usually big, slow, and stupid creatures who are easily confused when you move behind, behind or underneath them and telegraph all their attacks like they're in the WWE. Can we have some examples? But then I'd encounter the occasional showdown where the difficulty spiked up dramatically without warning and I'd die 20 or 30 agonizing deaths on a single boss, leaving me to wonder if I just wasn't properly leveled or something, which was never the case, I just needed to get good. This is so vague, those specific bosses stand in such stark contrast to the much milder exploration sections that it can be quite jarring, and I often felt like the level, like the levels preceding a tough boss didn't properly prepare me for that gauntlet. More likely, my skills probably worsened during the stretch of mostly undemanding travels between the dramatically more difficult boss fights. What? That's the dodging power? Wouldn't examples be spoilers? It's a review in it, not a critique. A review should have examples. There's a certain level of spoilering that is fine in reviews, or else you can't even discuss the game. Even, not even just examples of what boss it was, though, but, like, what part of the boss, like, what was the difference there? Like, describe more in detail what problem you had, right? I don't think this is a very good review. And I tried to give IGN the benefit of the doubt, because I think they get a little too much shit. What's the Starfield review like? Is it also very... Very vague? Is the review is already long enough? Well, I mean, you could cut other parts out of it to include examples. Like, earlier on, they were just basically just describing a lot of the game. Almost, like, word for word, how it just... Here's how it functions, with very little commentary or, like, flavor to add onto it. Hmm. That's That inconsistent difficulty is even more noticeable depending on your chosen character build. That's because, so far as I can tell, playing with emotivity, Lies of P's equivalent to a strength stat build, is multitudes less difficult than specking into technique. I've heard the opposite, actually, so that's interesting. Maybe a lot of people going into technique uh, just assume that motivity is weaker than it, its version of dexterity. As a technique player, your weapons don't do much to stagger enemies and your ability to block incoming damage is painfully limited since you only fully negate a small percentage of the attack unless you're able to pull off a perfect parry. In order to best the most formidable bosses, you'll have to learn the enemy's attack patterns and get down the precise timing required to perfectly parry most attacks before finally breaking the enemy's guard and laying into them with your fast moving weapons. A process that's quite enjoyable but also extremely unforgiving. Okay, I wonder if there are a bunch of bosses that you can just dodge and guard and then regain your health and they just fall. I wonder if trying to perfect parry almost every single attack is is a harder mode. Not hardest mode, I wonder if it's a hard mode. Hmm. Meanwhile, as a motivity player, you can simply smack down bosses with your heavy weapons that do enormous dagger damage, leaving them wide open to deadly executions. That's pretty hilarious to watch, but it also feels pretty busted, especially compared to a significantly more demanding technique-focused playthrough. Lies of P also just has some nice qu little quality of life improvements I'd like to see carry over into other souls. Like, this is very true. Like how you don't lose all your ergo, its version of souls, by dying, but... But rather have a certain... What? Rather have a certain amount deducted every time you take damage on your way to recover your lost currency. Uh, my dude, they're all like that. What? Or how you're notified whenever you're carrying enough ergo to level up your character instead of resting at a checkpoint, only to discover you need to kill one more enemy and come back. Little touches like that go a long way. Yeah, that that's good. The notification's good. Um, Joe never knows? What do you mean? Joe is still unaware? My read on this sentence is that he thinks that you lose all your souls when you die in those games, but you don't. You could always run back to your bloodstain. When you die and lost 5k ergo, on your run back every hit you take reduces that recoverable amount. Yeah, I know that. If you die on a run back to your souls, you don't you don't lose everything. Oh, I didn't know that. What happens to the souls you get on the run back? Are there two blood stains now? Nope, just one. Your blood stain. Okay, so if I have 10k souls in my blood stain. 
and I go and fight somewhere else, and I have another 10k souls on my puppet, okay? And then I jump off a cliff. What happens? The first blood stain disappears along with all the souls. Yeah, that's that's what I think happens too, but no, that doesn't happen. The 10k on you become 5k. So you come back to life with 5k on you? Okay, you know what? We're going to have to go in and fight and figure this out. Okay. Or how you notify whenever carrying enough ergo level. Okay. Unfortunately, Lies of P doesn't manage to rid itself of the clunky roots of the of the genre completely, and I did encounter some fairly obnoxious bugs during my time with it. Among other things... Example? Among other things, there were a few times where I phased through the environment in a weird... Okay, here, in a weird way, and enemies have a weird habit of just despawning right in front of me like they were fading away during the final season, f season finale of a long-running high school TV drama. What? Okay, I didn't see that, but maybe you had an earlier build. Thankfully, none of these issues were particularly widespread, so they're unlikely to drag down an otherwise perfectly enjoyable adventure, especially since performance is otherwise rock solid. I maintain a perfectly stable frame rate at every point in my adventure. Yeah, that's true. It does run really, really well, which isn't a given in this genre. Also, many Souls likes are known for having mem memorable music, but Lies of P truly stands out in this regard. Not only are the tracks during boss fights great, uh, but there are collectible vinyl records that you can play at a jukebox back at your base, and some of those songs are seriously just fantastic. So much, in fact, that it's become a bit of an obsession to collect them all, and I've still got a lot of searching to do. Seriously, that jukebox made me find excuses to hang out at the social hub, crafting weapons, and working on my build. It's that good. Good to practice with it too, right? Like when you go to the dummy. Verdict. Lies of P might not branch out particularly far from its souls-like inspiration, but like a marionette controlled by a skillful puppet master, <laughs> it plays the part extremely well in a wonderfully dark fantasy world. It must be said that its uneven difficulty didn't always make me feel like an underdog, especially when playing as a brawny, overpowered version of Pinocchio with a massive weapon, and combat pigeonholed me into a specific playstyle while the levels are less open and twisting than most. But with an awesome weapon crafting system, some really memorable boss fights, and one of the better stories we've seen in this game, in this genre, I can enthusiastically recommend you spend your time hanging out with Geppetto and friends. If you've been waiting for a Bloodborne remaster or sequel that may never come, Liza P is the next best thing. Alright, so I don't think this review is very good for what I want to, to get out of, a, a, out of a review, but in terms of what IGN's audience wants, I can't judge it because I'm not IGN's audience really. In fact, typically I don't really go much in for written reviews. I like to see video footage and kind of just soak in what the reviewer is saying while I look at the footage myself and see. Um, so I can't judge it very well. I feel like there weren't enough examples. I have no idea what they're talking about um, with this part here. Maybe builds matter way more than I think. I'm curious now, like, the different ways I could play this and see if I could break it. I don't know what the hell this is all about, man. It's totally fine as a review, lol. If this is what you like out of your reviews, that's fine. I like more examples and specifics out of my reviews. If this is what you like, just to get a little, like, a, a product reading of what the game contains with a little bit of opinion here and there, okay, that's fine. Like, I can see the appeal of that, but I want specifics. I won't spoil- I don't want spoilers, I just want specifics. Okay, let's read some, uh... Some Steam reviews. And Metacritic? Oh, Metacritic changed their layout. What the hell? What's this? Okay, critic reviews. 80 out of 100. Mostly positive, 84%. 100, 100, 98, ni sorry, 95, 95, 91, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Oh, it is reviewing well. 90, 90, 90, 90, 88, 87, 87, 86, 85, 85, 85. Okay, what about the negative ones here? 40. VG247. What's VG247? There's some 40 out of 100. There's some enjoyment to be found in Lies of P. Its action is competent, but lacks the polish and stir of its contemporaries. Its atmosphere can be engrossing, but it's a hodgepodge of themes and aesthetics you've seen before that never rises above the familiar. I was never impressed by it, and I never stopped questioning the point of the entire endeavor throughout my time with it. Holy shit, dude. What the fuck? Metro Game Central gave it 50, a competent facsimile of Bloodborne, but one so completely lacking in new ideas that it can never only come across as a pale imitation. These reviews brought to you by that guy that was in chat the other day. Euro 
Gamer gave it a 6 out of 10, or 60 out of 100. Liza P has strong, has strong enough foundations in its edgy tone and tweaked weapons to provide an enjoyable experience for those in need of a FromSoft fix. That's a pretty low score, IMO. Hmm. But I don't know, like... This is the problem with scored reviews. Like, maybe a, maybe a 60 out of 100 is, is pretty good from Eurogamer, you know? What about some of the more positive ones? Easy Allies gave it an 80. Alright, I like Easy Allies. With so many great games available right now, it's easy to get lost in the shuffle, but Lies of P is worth making time for. Although it doesn't do anything revolutionary, it's an all-around great game with satisfying and engaging combat, entertaining and challenging bosses, and strong atmosphere. On paper, it may seem like a bizarre concept, but once you hop in, Lies of P makes a, makes a strong case for itself with no strings attached. He... Hmm... Jimquisition. I love Lies of P until I don't, but those less adoring moments are always followed by something that ropes me right back in. A slickly directed, beautifully presented game that takes the absurd concept of marrying Bloodborne to Pinocchio and commits so earnestly that it transcends the silly and just plain works. Difficulty spikes and dodgy pacing undermine it at key points, but some systems aren't as useful as they should be, but none of that takes away from the high quality and the amount of imagination poured into what have could just could have been just another Souls-like. Even at its most exasperating, I wouldn't let it lie. <laughs> I would agree that it has some pacing issues. Hmm. Push square, never heard of them. The loadout, hey poor player. Game Pro Germany, IGN Italia, Gamers Heroes, IGN Brazil. RPG fan. 88 out of 100. Liza P certainly evokes the likeness of the game we all know it is trying to emulate. That's right, Nightmare Creatures 2. <laughs> uh, however, it is polarizing to, to me. That was a joke, by the way. It has it in parentheses afterwards. However, it is polarizing to me. It marks a step backward in several, several ways from the design of its inspiration. However, it also offers a few alternative modes of stepping forward from those designs, such as, such as robust weapon adjustments, streamlined cosmetic options, and a fun new skill, skill tree in quartz upgrades. It also offers a more obvious central story, one that does a good job of recognizing its ancestry while gracefully appropriating it for the present cultural moment. What? It, ju it is just a bummer that, from a gameplay standpoint, Lies of P fails to remember where it came from. What the fuck? Okay, th I'm so uncomfortable. Usually I'm like looking at good reviews and be how is that an 88 out of 100? That, that felt more negative than the lower scores down there. Normally I'm like looking at everyone's like loving the game and I'm like, what the fuck is everyone smoking? It's not usually the opposite. Okay, user reviews. Leon CO2332 gave it a 0 out of 10. The bosses are extremely poorly developed, especially the last one. There are even good bosses, but the last one is so poorly done that it's sad. All right, thank you. Banger review. I would like to see more. Okay, JD1872 says, It is almost very good, but the combat and a few other issues stop it from feeling that enjoyable. They seem to have gone for a combination of Sekiro and Bloodborne, but the pairing is just not as sharp as Sekiro, and I never really found a weapon or playing style that was satisfying. Skill issue. Some of the some of the bosses and mini-bosses just seem to have endless health and fights go on forever. The fights are tanky, but I think that's a good thing. I think I think um, a lot of fights in, in the other Souls like need more health. Some of them just fall the fuck over, man. Uh, some of the bosses and mini-bosses just seem to have enough health the fights going forever. You're waiting for them to finish their 15-hit combo so you can hit them a few times. The other Deflect them! The other main issue the game has is the leveling up of weapons and your characters does not feel like it makes any noticeable difference. You do not get the same satisfaction you get from a From Software game where you feel more powerful each time you level up. Mmm... No, I feel it's about the same, isn't it? It is maybe because the progression is extremely linear and there are no real options to explore other areas or progress in a different order. You are actually better just buying a bunch of consumables and throwing them at the bosses because they do better damage than the weapons. <laughs> it is a good attempt for their first game in the genre and it is enjoyable in places. Some of the boss designs are very good, although the difficulty is not well balanced. Maybe they will fix some of the balancing issues with patches and it will get better. 7 out of 10 from JD1872. That seems like a reasonable view. I, do, I don't agree with it, but it seems reasonable. Okay, last one, then we'll go to Steam reviews. These, these are Metacritic. Uh, 
Demestro says, 7 out of 10. Oh man, this is a tough game to rate. On the one hand, there are they are newcomers to the genre. You want to give them the feedback that they're onto something, yet the very important details are so messy and clunky to me personally that an overhaul is needed. Wow. The game is technically so clean, runs perfectly fine. However, when it comes to Souls likes, this is not what counts. Yeah, you know, you clearly like FromSoft games. Can't rate it any higher, as this is just really a remix of the FromSoft mechanics. Moreover, there are fundamental flaws that so desperately need to be fixed. Too narrow parry window. No reward whatsoever for perfect parries. What? You still get pushed to the edges of the arena where camera issues, especially with larger bosses, are waiting. The posture mechanic is nothing but bait to be high risk, very low reward. A lot of times when the opponent's health bar is, is shining, you are baited into trying a charged attack. However, most of the enemy's attacks go way longer than the short window you have. In that context, the lack of a poise system is so weird. Every mob can sneeze you out of your combo while you almost never can stun the opponents. There is no difference between dex and strength builds. Blocking centric system punishes low HP. Your basically dead while you are learning basic parries because not blocking perfectly still makes you lose HP which is all the more weird as there are perks that reward low HP essential mechanics need to be unlocked like dodging from the ground I would give the game a pass on that if it wasn't for a fight where smashes to the ground were in the center of the fight at least for a bit what the specter summoning is not balanced at all in fact it makes fights even more difficult as it only introduces chaos the game is still good I enjoyed a lot of it it depends on you if you want to give them a pass on these things but I for my part I am happy that I didn't buy it and it was available on Game Pass. Alright. Alright. Well, that was a review. Alright, Lies of P on Steam. Let's look for some negative reviews on Steam. Alright, so right now this has 4,899 reviews on Steam. It has very, It's very positive. Let's close the preview window. All right, negative. All right, pros. This is the top negative review. Pros. The closest any independent studio has come to touching From Software's legacy. It is undeniable. Oh, should we put it on screen? I didn't want to put Metacritic on the screen. Why isn't it showing up? That's weird. Ah! Oh no! No, 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 no! Alt F4, panic, panic, panic at the disco. Liza P on Steam. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right. All right, we good? The closest any independent studio has come to touching From Software's legacy, it's undeniable what Lies of P's inspiration is, regardless of what the development team may say. The tone and style of Bloodborne which, with mechanics resembling Sekiro and Dark Souls, but despite its many flaws and overall tone of this review, the game does do an astounding job at living up to that comparison, and I'd be very excited to see what this what else this team can do. Beautiful music and world detail. Between the detail of Krat and its surrounding areas, the incredible music via the records and boss music, the, this game matches the quality of AAA titles, uh, while a establishing itself with style wholly unique from most games out there. There's also a ton of variety in the areas you visit and enemies you encounter, which is quite hard to manage to do successfully. Fun weapon and clothing, unlockables, unique boss weapons such as a ra rapier um umbrella, uh, fun character outfits such as a variety of animal masks, okay, engaging interesting narrative and characters, large amount of bang for your buck. Playing through the demo, my largest worry was that it would be incredibly short experience, however I was mistaken. My standard playthrough is roughly around 37 hours. Having tried my best to see everything even better, the game offers new game plus. Alright, yeah, it, it is pretty long, yeah, it's lengthy. Uh, game ran great even at 144 frames per second. Alright, cons. Alright, here we go. 
Absurd parry and dodge timing. One of the largest and loudest criticisms the game received with the demo was concern over the dodging and perfect guard guarding feeling incredibly tight and difficult to use. Make no mistake, this has, as, as the time of writing, writing of this, not been fixed anywhere close to far enough. I mean, it doesn't need to be fixed, though. I, where is this narrative coming from? I see this a lot. Am I wrong? Uh, like, it seems like a lot of people in chat agree with me, actually, which is also uncomfortable for me. Fix what? It's fine. Like, I, I barely even did any dodging, and when I did the dodging, I'm like, okay, that functioned exactly like I thought it was. Like... It's fine. Like, I, I love this narrative. It's like, oh, look, it needs to be fixed. It's not even that, oh, we don't like it, we need to adapt. No, it's broken. It needs to be, it needs a patch. It needs to be fixed. Like, what? You will miss parry timings incredibly often. Dodging will never feel quite right, even after you upgrade it, which, by the way, should absolutely not be a thing. The timing is so pinpoint that even by the end of the game, I still wasn't hitting most of my perfect guards. It has succeeded in making me want to replay Sekiro just to feel some consistency. And resulted in my entire playthrough feeling incredibly annoying. I, I don't want to say skill issue, but skill issue. <laughs> hey, Lily. <laughs> I don't want to, but... <laughs> Can you say skill issue? Skill issue. Condescendingly. Skill issue. Skill issue. Like your Joe Biden. Mm. Skill issue. There we go. Thank you. You have to sound like you're about to burst into tears. I have to close my eyes to yeah. really get into character to okay. do that. Skill issue. Art artificial difficulty. One of the most important fundamental lessons. Can you define it first, please? Lessons from From Software can teach. In seeking to make a Souls-like game is how to make encounters challenging but fair. <laughs> And this fundamental lesson is completely missed by this game. Enemies often have insane amounts of health, and most do not stagger remotely from your swings. Boss fights rely on double phases. There are literally six plus, including three back-to-back -back in the final area, which is absolutely absurd. You can have normal boss fights. Human fights tend to devolve into backstab fest because trying to actually engage with them and their lack of stagger is frustrating. No, okay, I agree and disagree. Human fights were my least favorite, but they stagger a lot. What are you talking about? Th those were the ones where you did see a lot of stagger that's what set the human abilities like uh, the human enemies uh, aside from the carcasses and the and the puppets like humans stagger a lot dagger use yeah maybe it depends on your weapon that's true yeah i do agree that the human fights weren't that great though I, I i definitely agree there gemini i have no hate for the va who did a great job but gemini has to be without a doubt the worst inclusion of a game character in any game yeah this i agree with i don't know what the fuck gemini was even there for like, to the point where I started to wonder if it was just, like, the voice of Carlo talking through or whatever. I don't know what Gemini's point was. Uh, that Who cares about that, though? Weapon variety. Whoa! Weapon variety. Why is... Why did that happen? What? I don't have control. I don't have... Con I don't have control? Okay. Now it's... Oh, it was the gamepad. Okay, that's weird. Weapon variety. As many users have pointed out, heavy weapons are simply not viable for a majority of people. <laughs> the IGN review was like, heavy weapons are the best! Number one! What? what? <laughs> They're very slow. They only do a marginal amount of damage more than dexterity weapons. They have barely any stagger. They take extremely high durability damage, and many of the movesets are interruptible mid-swing. And the problem isn't that dex weapons need to be nerfed. They simply need to make heavy weapons better across the board full stop. Mechanic flaws. There are several mechanics in this game that, in my opinion, either add little to the game or detract from it heavily. The repair system, I barely ever had to engage with this system, and when I did, it was a huge annoyance that halted the game rhythm. And the fable system, the abilities are sick, but you barely ever get to use them even after upgrading them, are two examples that come to mind. Also, as mentioned before, upgrading dodging should not be a thing. <laughs> What was the one where they just kept bringing it back with the fucking the facial facial animations? Also, the facial animations—it's so bad. Dodging should just be good from the start. Okay, I disagree there. I think the weapon—I spoke about this at length. I think that the weapon repair system is fine and it adds the justification for some systems working. Um, and you don't have to do it very much. I don't even think I had to repair my weapon at all in the last fight, right? And that was a that was a long two-phase fight. Uh, the fables, you can spec into it, you can build into fables if you want with the P organ, and I didn't do that, and it was still nice to have this, this, like, this wumph ability that you could use for free damage. Um, yeah. I agree with the dodge thing, you should have to spec into it. I don't think you should have to spec into the, the roll from the floor. 
the other dodge that you have to get i don't know about that one i didn't really i didn't really understand what that did but i think you shouldn't have to spec into rolling on the floor Disappointing rewards. Several unique bosses and enemies, including the Black Rabbit Brotherhood, do not drop unique rewards despite having neat weapons, clothing, and or abilities that would be fun to use the player. Especially the older brothers, Buster Sword and Mask. Like, how the hell did we not get that at all? Okay, on the one hand, would it have been great to have those weapons? Yeah, absolutely. On the other hand, it has like 50 fucking weapons. There are enough weapons. That's not fair. There are so many weapons. Lies appears to be one of the most conflicting experiences I've played in a long time. There has to be, there's a ton to celebrate in the game's craftsmanship, and I genuinely believe that it is the closest any developers come to replicating the magic the From Software creates. But as much as I tried to ignore it, the flaws in this game soured my entire experience. Awkwardly tuned block timing, <sighs> ridiculous and annoying enemy and boss design philosophy, horrible facial animations, and a myriad of individual mechanical problems got in the way of the enjoyable things the game did. Because of this, I personally cannot recommend the game. I would heavily recommend trying this game out on game pass before you buy it to see if it's a good fit for you if the game ever fixes these issues i'd really reevaluate re for sure okay listen i don't agree with this review but this is better than the ign review are there spoilers here like to me like this had examples it was specific this reviewer knew what they liked and knew what they didn't like and they fucking said it man like this this is better than the ign review to me i don't agree with it but i fucking can respect it it's it's pretty detailed it's it's clear it's got a lot here but it's not overly long it understands colonialism yes it doesn't need an editor this is a good review i mean he's wrong <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good review let me be clear this game is great and i'm loving it however de novo oh, okay uh update updated check the bottom okay where's the bottom all right here we go all right having finished the game i want to update my review and my final thoughts i'm sorry to say i will not be changing my view of the game well, why is it an update then what the fuck they got us in the first half Combat is is built entirely around perfect parry with a very weak dodge, small parry window, and high damage health sponge enemies. Update! I haven't changed my mind! Small penis gay Neil Armstrong. Update text. I'm still gay. Most, co <laughs> Most common cause of death is player didn't time the perfect parry correctly, which is just frustrating, especially in the late part of the game. Detailed review. While I've been playing the, this game for almost 50 hours and I've had a good time for the most part, I'm not entirely sure if I would recommend this game to others. I'm not. I'm going to say no for now for the following reasons. The game's combat focuses a little bit too much uh, on the player pulling off perfect parries. Regular blocking leads to the player still taking damage, though that can be regained by counterattacking, so, sort of like one could in Bloodborne. A perfect parry leads to the player taking no damage, however, and there are certain attacks that can only be countered with a perfect parry as blocking and dodging does not work. This is not true. You can still dodge away from it. Maybe you didn't realize that, or maybe you're just not including that for now. It's You can't iframe it. This can be very frustrating for players who struggle in timing the perfect parry correctly, because the window is a perfect parry is very small. You know what? I think that's that's fair criticism to levy against the game, if that was the case, because the tooltip makes you think that you can't dodge it, and you have to perfect parry it. I can vividly imagine someone playing this game, and every single time there's a red attack, they just freeze in place and go, the game said I couldn't dodge it, so I have to perfect parry it where, where you can. You can and dodge it so i think i think that maybe is fair but like like god the game's so long would that player get through like three fight three bosses or three areas without realizing you can still just dodge away from it like i don't know you must surely right this is especially frustrating during boss and mini boss fights because a lot of the bosses and mini bosses are heavy health sponges. The dodge is also an issue with the game because it is nowhere near as useful as it is in Bloodborne or another Souls game because the player both doesn't dodge as far and doesn't get as many iframes. Doesn't dodge as far? While the dodge can be upgraded, which does make things a bit better, it sadly isn't enough to fix the dodge. As a result, the player character feels a lot slower and more sluggish than in a game like Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring, etc. What?! May oh, definitely against Sekiro, yeah, for sure. You're slower than in Sekiro. Maybe Bloodborne. I don't know. Elden Ring. There's no fucking way. What were you like full on inventory weight or something? Like was your were you a heavy puppet? There's no way. Oh, Bloodhound step. Yeah, maybe Bloodhound step. 
again, this is why it's so hard to judge these games and where people are coming from, which can be very frustrating during boss fights because both bosses and mini bosses are very often very very often very fast and can overwhelm the player with their superior speed. Basically, the combat doesn't feel very balanced as it becomes very obvious very quickly that you're supposed to use perfect parries and the game heavily enforces that. Regular blocking and dodging just aren't as viable in combat, so for anyone who struggles with timing perfect parries, they will have a very rough time. FromSoft's game always allow every approach to be equally viable. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Whether the player blocks, parries, or dodges, usually every option is equally viable during combat. This isn't really the case in Lies of P, as the game heavily, heavily enforces the use of perfect parries. I think this is holding the game back from really shining, because as it is now, it can be a very frustrating experience for all the wrong reasons, especially in the late part of the game, because the player frequently encounters enemies that have a lot of health and deal a huge amount of damage, very heavily enforcing the focus on perfect parry. I don't agree. These issues might be fixed in time with patches to bring... <laughs> always with the patches. Bring in more balancing for the combat. We will have to see. For now, however, I'd say be very careful with this game, especially if you're somebody who struggles with perfect parries and wants good facial animations. All right. D update. I still feel the same way, Lamayo. All right. I think... I think this is enough. Need some tweaks and changes. Is it going to be with parries and dodging? P is not very agile nor strong, since there is no poise or hyper armor for P. But wait, did you know the enemies have poise and you don't? That's pretty cool design. It really wouldn't hurt to give P some poise or hyper armor. Anyways, enemies have no problem staggering you until you are dead, so either you are forced to block or try to dodge and hope you don't get hit. Jimmy OTS is probably the worst designed boss ever created in the Souls world. How the heck did that abomination get to be in the game? The, the swamp monster? That fight was a banger. If you think King of Puppets is tough, just wait for that garbage boss. This message brought to you someone who hasn't killed the green monster in the swamp. Overall, I didn't enjoy any of the bosses I've faced so far. I don't know if they get tweaks or not, but the time will tell, although I do really doubt it. How enjoyable is this chat to see me just like off kilter being like what the fuck? How much how many of you like the the the, the scootin' fruity that you're enjoying right now? Fucking hell. This game's so good. It's so good. It's such a good game. What the fuck? I think it is time for us to let developers know that super delayed attack animation is not a good way to ramp up difficulty in this genre. Are you gonna go and repeat this review on every single one of FromSoft's games after Dark Souls 1 did Panas? Are you? How curious. Really? Okay. Lumen. Visually stunning, but then you play it and realize it's got no rhythm at all. It's basically a clunky version of Sekiro. I wish Perry's did something. They would if you tried. <laughs> Good until chapter 8. Which is chapter 8? Extremely downhill after that. Bosses are more annoying than challenging. Their effects cover most of the screen, so you have no idea what's going on. They also push you to a corner where you can't dodge out of and you can't see anything because the camera goes crazy. Parry window seems to be changing from move to move. <laughs> <laughs> not consistent at all. <laughs> Try pressing the parry at the same time. Maybe after a few patches it will be decent. Bosses are cool, but become tedious really quickly. At first it was hard, and then a learning curve, and then, okay, parry these six attacks in a row before I can land one hit. It felt good for a while. I've played all the Souls games in Sekiro, so I know the drill. Do you? I'm using a great sword for fun, and for better uh, block if I whiff a parry for reference. I feel like parrying has yielded better results for downing bosses, but it still feels unsatisfying as a gameplay loop. Sekiro did involve parrying a lot as well, and I don't intend to compare them. With that said, it did feel satisfying to parry a combo in Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't intend to compare them. I will now compare them. Now, when I see a boss skate, I, I don't think, oh, cool, a new boss. This will be sick. I think, God, I'm going to have to memorize the parry timings for another three-hit combo, three two-hit combos, and then a five-seven-hit combo plus right attacks before I have a chance. Okay, what, well, what are you doing in the other games, then, when it comes to dodging them? That's the genre, my dude. Oh, no, it's a different button instead of the dodge button. That's the same shit. You just don't like the genre. That's fine. It doesn't have to be. I genuinely don't feel like finishing the game. It seems like chores or eating vegetables. <laughs> Dude compared the game to eating vegetables. Lies of P. 
pee. It's like eating vegetables. The combat is fun and the zones I have played through have been fun. It's a cool world to explore with neat little side quests. What? I may still continue after writing this, but as of now, it's not even frustrating. The bosses just got boring due to how over-engineered they feel. It's not hard, it's just boring. When I do beat the boss after taking a time to memorize everything, I feel good. When the next time I see a boss gate, I lose my appetite to play. All right, it sounds like you just need to have a stronger strength of will. You need to go over and like give yourself a pep talk in the mirror and be like, you know what? I am, I'm not gonna let Liza P beat me. It sounds like you're having the fucking intended souls like experience, my brother. And you just are like annoyed. And right now you're in the, oh fuck, the game's kicking my ass phase. And then finally, when you get through it, you're gonna be like, holy shit, I love this game. Time to kick its ass. Sounds like intended experience. What the hell? You know what? We should bookmark this and see if it's update. I beat the game and now I like it. Holy shit, 10 out of 10. This, the way you feel now is how I feel watching your, your videos about games like, you fuck off! What are you talking about? I have, I, I'm objectively correct in my videos. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Update, I've actually finished the game. Review stands as is. Oh, thanks for coming back and update. Moreover, I probably would add semi last boss to the cons list because it is cheap ass garbage. <laughs> is there something in some souls like that you don't like? Well, don't worry. Liza P got you covered. <laughs> it got it all. Like literally put all the stuff you hate from any souls like into bingo card. You will get few filled lines guaranteed. Imprecise controls where it takes a small delay before you block or heal, so you constantly get why didn't it work feeling? Check. Enemies with absolute BS attacks that might literally combo you to death after a single hit with any uh, without any chance of recovery? Check. A section where you need to navigate girders <laughs> while being shot by numerous ranged enemies? Check. So specific. Numerous of absolutely cheap ambushes, check. Bosses with unexpected second phases, check. Bosses with multiple enemies at once in most unfun way it can be, check. Poorly telegraphed attacks, I'm gonna die. Poorly telegraphed attacks which make it really hard to understand when it hits, check. It keeps going, it's just check. Dude, hit the bingo analogy it was like, you know what, Lenin that, Lenton that, that's gold. Let's do the whole game like a fucking bingo card. <laughs> Attacks that you can't evade and must just face tank, check. Poison swamps, check. Having to fight groups of enemies while being shot by enemy you can't possibly reach. Check. Hard to reach area that rewards you with absolute garbage loot. Check. Enemies not affected by the stuff that affects you, like being able to walk bridges without breaking them while looking much heavier than your character. Check. Dying very often, not because of interesting complex enemy, but because of camera bullshit. Check. Introducing the rule, red attacks are not blockable, and then constantly breaking this rule by giving bosses attacks that are not <laughs> that are not blockable, but also not highlighted by red. Check. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit. I agree with that one. Boss having a bunch of similar attacks, but 20 different combos with those attacks, so it is never clear which combo they currently use and how to react. Check. And yes, I will expand the list whenever I... <laughs> How many edits does this have? And yes, I will expand the list whenever I recall some other crap aspect from the game. Check. I don't remember a single boss when I finished and was like, man, that was hard but fun. Almost every boss, I'm crying. I'm so glad to be over with this bullshit. Lies of P is by no means worse souls like and has a lot of cool stuff going for it, but man, I can swear it does its damnedest to make me absolutely hate it. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> Later game is completely messed up. Ridiculous traps and completely unbalanced combat system are not fun. It feels like the designers never played the second half of this game. If you enjoy Souls-like games, just replay any Dark Souls game. Ooh. 
Ooh. Most, most negative, 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 negative only. We're negative Andes here. It's like if Sekiro had a terrible deflect system and the fights had no rhythm to them. Wow. Wow. All right, last one. La oh, it's so long. Last one. It seems everyone is singing praises for this game as if it's the second coming of Miyazaki. However, I cannot in good faith recommend it in its current state. Initially, I was enamored with it, but my appreciation quickly waned as I progressed. Mechanically and in terms of design, there are several issues with the game. Fa okay, how long until we get to the parry window? How long? Fans claim it's a love letter to the Souls game, but it lacks the essence of Souls games. FromSoft Soulsborne series, along with Sekiro and Elden Ring, offer challenging experiences to provide myriad ways to conquer challenges. This game does not really do that. Like different kinds of throwing knives. So often in this game, you feel like you are shoehorned into a situation and the game does not provide the means for you to solve it, other than banging your head against the wall that the game built for you. No, you have shot put balls, the, the buzz saws, the, the bottles of goo. You have lots of throwables. What are you talking about? Um... I think some of the design are seriously flawed in this game, like Dark Souls 2. It's an imitation of the essence of Souls games, but miss some major marks. Mechanics. Firstly, I feel like the devs cannot decide if they want this game to be more Bloodborne, Sekiro, or Dark Souls, or both. The character P is neither agile enough nor strong enough for either playstyle. Enemies frequently outpace and overpower P, making encounters unbalanced. P's perfect parry window is exceedingly tight, and some bosses' combo has an interval of like 0.5 seconds. Unless you have perfectly memorized the boss's movesets, I don't know how you are really supposed to perfectly perfect parry them. Yeah, you... you... The, Dude, that's that's the game. That's the genre. How are you getting through the other ones without memorizing the boss's movesets? My dude, that's the game. Enemies also do not react to being perfectly perfect parried. They do not cancel their combo. That's a good thing. They do not get staggered, making this mechanic extremely unsatisfying and unrewarding. Oftentimes, in an elite boss, in elite boss fight, you feel like your character is nowhere as strong as the ginormous enemies. Yeah, again, that's the point. You're you're overcoming something stronger, but where's but it, we're nowhere as fast either. P cannot raise up his weapon fast enough to parry a lot of the time. What? Due to recovery frames on so many of his actions. What's worse is that P has no poise or hyper armor or or no style or no grace. He has a funny face. Poise is simply not a. St a stats in this game, no amount of gear or any weapon changes that, so P with no poise and cannot dodge block fast enough, resulting you just often get combo to death in a corner by a rampaging boss or stunlock to death on, gr on the ground. More on this later. Second of all, weapon design. I played through the game using a strength build. I started with heavy weapon, and let me tell you, the heavy weapons in this game are pathetic and woefully ineffective. Heavy weapons in Dark Souls are some of the, some of the fans' favorite. They are slow and cumbersome, but they have long ranges, very high damage, and very high poise damage. So as long as you know what you are doing, you can keep the enemies at bay by killing them at range or stagger stun them. However, the heavy weapons reach in this game is laughable. Did my dude put, like, the heaviest hammerhead on, like, the shortest hilt and is like, I am very intelligent? You can make some really long-range weapons. What? is laughable and their attacks are so slow that with super long recovery frames that stop you from dodging or guarding. What's worse is that for some reason the geniuses <laughs> and Neo is made it so even when you stance break an enemy, you have to do a fully charged heavy attack or fable attack, they are just as long to cast, to be able to do a fatal visceral execution attack. Enemies also does not react to being stance broken whatsoever. They will continue their relentless combo and overlong delayed attack combos. Perfect parry was hard enough already, this just makes Makes it all the more unrewarding, especially good luck doing it with the pipe wrench because the charging heavy is a two hit combo and the first hit doesn't count, only landing the second hit allows for the visceral attack. Well, it also wouldn't be so bad if our ultra heavy weapon and slow weapons, ultra heavy and slow weapons have any amount of poise or hyper armor so we can trade health, oh, obsessed with this, huh? So we can trade for visceral attack. This, this review brought to you by someone who hit traded through every single other Souls game until now? No, your character has no poise or hyper armor regardless of what weapon you use. So if you are almost done with your super long charging heavy and even the weakest of the trash mobs look at you the wrong way, you are a bunch of hearts. I also don't understand why the game devs thinks that any vital information such as stance bar should be hidden. In Sekiro, this stance bar of both you and the enemies are clearly shown. I go back and forth on that. The way that it shows up in the bottom after you get some hits is an indicator and that's and that's better than nothing, but maybe it should be there. I don't know. I really wish it was an Elden Ring. 
so it should be if I'm consistent I should say that it should really be in lies of P but I feel like because of the deflections and how they work that it's more okay in lies of P but maybe it should be there the reason why I think I don't like it in Elden Ring though is because of how it's it's more difficult to build that up because you dodging doesn't do it but also like it often feels like they they clear it faster and consistently and also I swear to God, during some some attacks enemies have, you do a charged R2 on them, and because they're in that phase, they just don't take stagger damage. That's how it feels to me. So I, I guess I just want more information because it just doesn't feel right. So maybe that's where it's coming from. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just don't understand the intricacies of it. Third of all, enemy design in general. Every enemy in this game has an ungodly amount of del delayed attacks. Pretty much every elite and boss enemy uses overly long 6-7 hit combo. Spinning attack, drunken master style delayed attack combo that is really, really poorly telegraphed. Some of the grab and slam attack also look too similar. Almost every non-grunt enemies also have furious perilous attack that you cannot dodge unless you want to wear a 21 weight late, weight late game amulet. But only perfect parry. Okay, again though, you can dodge it. I wish I could talk to these people and see if this is what they mean. Because if there are a lot of people out there that think you have you had to perfect parry every single red attack and you couldn't just dodge away from it or run away from it, then that explains a lot of the anger. Because fucking hell, man. Like, like yeah, I, I would be miserable too if I played this game all the way to the end and I didn't know that you can dodge roll away from a red attack, you know? Most of the regular elite enemies that you encounter throughout the expedition are so, so tanky and do so much damage. When I think of an elite enemy, I think of the of Black Knights or Chained Ogre. Okay, Chained Ogre sucks, man. What are you talking about? It's one of the worst fights in the game. However, for the elite enemies in this game, if they had a little bit more health, they might as well be regular bosses. Most of the enemies are also so very aggressive that they leave you with very little window to punish. Like, they repeat their 5-hit combo three times immediately, one after another. Coupled with the fact that even if you stance break them with your perfect parry, you cannot punish them, them, them because, again, you need to land a charged heavy. The camera angle is seriously awful a lot of the times, too. What?! The camera was, like, one of the best, if not the best, I've seen in these games. A lot of the enemies are so much bigger than you and have so many overhead attacks. The overhead attacks already barely gives you any visual cues to begin with, and coupled with um, the very close-up camera angle, it's very hard to dodge parry them. For example, late base... Uh, late sp spoiler. Oh, that's a YouTube link. I'm not going there. Bosses always look forward to fighting late game. Okay, if it's the last boss, I agree the camera didn't work all that well in phase one of the last boss, if that's what they're talking about. But that's only the only example I can think of, actually. Bosses, I always look forward to fighting bosses in Dark Souls, but I absolutely dread fighting bosses in this game. All bosses in this game, uh, bar two, are either multi-health bar bosses with multiple phases per health bar, or absolute heart gank fights. It's not just difficult, it's exhausting and annoying. Especially the gank fight. I'm not getting into the Dark Souls 2 debate again on why both design-wise and mechanically Artorias and Gale are some of the best bosses and are what the game is vessel for. Comboed with P's relatively slow movement, honestly half the boss fights remind me of Millennia, like my character is in the wrong game. Ooh, for people for people caring enough to read the full review or for people asking why I'm trying to compare it to Dark Souls, what's that? Why compare? The game directly copies animation UI and encounters from Dark Souls Bloodborne. It's clear the game is inspired by FromSoft. Read the full review and you can see the game is trying so hard to be Dark Souls. Lol. So many of these people have less than 5 hours in the game. How about you beat the game then come back to me? Also, most bosses took less than 5 tries, but doesn't mean they were rewarding or enjoyable. Okay, that's cope. That's cope. You're, there's no way you're complaining that the game is too hard and you still beat everything in less than 5 tries. How would you even notice that? Two health bars should be an occasional surprise, not something expected. You can tell a boss that has a second health bar because the first one is just too easy. Yeah, that's true. Do you plan on playing the Twin Mirror by the same people who made Life is Strange? My, my weave! We're doing this right now! No, I'm not. I don't think we're going to play that. Is it good? Is it worth it? Could I get you to read backlogged reviews? I have a link ready. Everyone is so self-important there. It's great. All right, that'll be the last one. Sure, sure, sure. Mod, mod recommends. Sure. Send it my way. Me when my mom asks asks why there's piss all over the toilet seat. <sighs> all right.
Because it li it's Lies of P. Get it? It's Lies of P. <clears throat> Bloodborne for fanboys. All right. There's a great sense of cheapness about the whole thing that seems to come from a lack of internal cohesion. There's something... Uh, heterogeneous? Geneous? Heterogeneity, yeah. Heterogeneous about the animations for the different art assets, the awkward translated item descriptions, and the crunchy roll dub voice acting. <laughs> Everything feels cobbled together, and this feeling is heightened by the way it appropriates so many aspects of Bloodborne without much consideration for the overall effect that the game achieves with them. There's something sympathetic about any piece of media whose goal is it, it is to be just as good as another, driven by a kind of scrappy... Exquisite... <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say it. Acquisitiveness? There we go. That insists it needs not, neither talent nor originality to succeed. However, they de-Italianize Pinocchio, which is unforgivable. All right, cool. Are we reading all of them? I think your mileage with this will heavily depend on how much you can forgive it for being so derivative, but I think in this case it's worth forgiving. Personally, I have no problem with stealing soul systems like bonfires, SS, stamina management, parries, rallies, etc., but there are points where I think Liza B crosses a line. Talking to sick people through windows, a not fire keeper calling you clever one. When are you called clever one in a souls like? I don't remember that one. Slowly pushing off open heavy double doors. Man hates Lord of the Rings. The same damn item pickup and menu sounds. I think these kind of, uh, kinds of choices are needlessly derivative and will only serve to remind people of other better games. Ooh. A more thrifty approach could have taken the meat of souls without also taking the, sh the, the chaff. All right, so this doesn't bother me at all. However, if that's what's setting people off, then it wasn't worth it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Even things like attacking, running, and dodging animations are uncannily similar to FromSoft titles, which is a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, this is one of the precious few Soul cop Souls copycats that actually feels great to play, because it takes the finely tuned animation cadence for of FromSoft so wholesale. The other Souls copycat that feels good... Sorry, the other Souls copycat that feels good Neo relies on the years of action game experience that Team Ninja has, so it's maybe preferable for an inexperienced dev to simply steal in this case. The negative side of this is that everything which feels off or out of place will stick out all the more severely. Level design is pretty obviously inferior to FromSoft games, I agree with that. As linear as it is with a bunch of superfluous shortcuts lacking the overlapping and layered tracks to define the best Souls levels, Dark Souls 3 Undead Settlement is a perfect example. That's the one you're going with and lacking any real side areas, but elsewhere I have to say that as the game went on I found remarkably little to complain about environmental design and the art direction is alarmingly good for a debut game Enemy variety is surprisingly great One of the critical things that separates good souls from mid souls I was really taken aback by how the game has unique mini bosses that are only used once or twice Whereas every basically every other souls copycat is defined by excessive reuse. Yep. This is very true uh, the quality of the animations is universally top-notch. Everything flows great, and so many weapons have enjoyable movesets and bosses with subtle variations in their combos to, to signify what, they, what they'll do next. Yep, very true. Yep. Arguably the best part of the game. All creativity is about stealing to some extent. Okay, I don't... Let's go to a negative one. This is too positive for us. There are a lot of positive reviews here. Where's a good one, Nagus? More like Lies of Plagiarism. This is actually the worst Souls-like game I've ever played. Its existence is an airtight argument for the uh, abolition of the Souls-like genre. This game shamelessly copies the aesthetic of Bloodborne. It cherry-picks mechanics from 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 Software's contemporary releases, haphazardly combining them without attempting to ensure they actually gel. It's been quite some time since I played a game with mechanics that actively work against each other. Uh, the way they do in this. Health regains after taking damage works in Bloodborne because you get rewarded for pressing your attack and maintaining aggression. It adds a sense of accelerated pace to the Souls formula. It doesn't work when you tie the same mechanic to a block. This is compounded by the fact that blocks knock the player backward. The parry is among the worst I've, I've ever seen in a game. It's not a frame one parry, and the window is a super tight eight frames that, all, this, that also locks you into a long animation, so it feels like it has a half second input delay. This means you have to parry before the attacks hit. As opposed to, it's not difficult, but it just feels unsatisfying. Moreover, the parry barely builds stagger meter, but failing to execute it results in half of your health or more being taken, so it's mostly taking a considerate risk for little reward. The dodge, like many of the characters' latent abilities, is underpowered because someone decided that carving out abilities that players should just have and throwing them into a skill tree was a good idea. It's a pathetic way to try and force some layer of progression. Still, it is an active detriment to the experience. Couple these issues with the fact that bosses have far too much health and very few windows for attack, and these encounters 
is mostly boiled down to tests of patience. It's not even particularly challenging. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. There it is. I love this line that people throw in when they're finding something too hard. I love this line. They always include this line. Always include this line. It just feels fucking awful. Awful play. If you're gonna emulate something you closely, you better not miss. And Liza P fucking whiffs in an almost impressive fashion. It's clear that the developers did not actually understand the games they were, they were ripping off. Instead, they took unharmonious mechanics, tried to slap them together, and made slight adjustments so it didn't look like they straight up copied From's homework. But they fail. But like the kid in school that tried to cheat off you, they fucking failed. This review brought to you someone by someone who can't kill King of Puppets. Cough, Josie R review cough. No, the I say the exact opposite, Chatter. I went out of my way to say this isn't me trying to get out of saying it's too hard. It is too hard. I literally did the opposite because of comments like this. Literally did the opposite. <sighs> Any other good ones, Nagast? This one? Good. These are the reviews of the most likes, by the way. Oh, okay. What about the negative ones? Sort by recent? What's a, what's a recent? Oh, this one doesn't have stars. Right. You know what? Most people seem to be positive. Maybe it's a mistake to focus on the negative. Like, look at all these positive reviews coming in recent. Positive, positive, mixed. Oh, another Smarter Kids homework. Here we go. Visibly cheating off the Smarter Kids uh, homework. Not really interested in whether the mechanics are good or are different enough, etc. I didn't like them, but I also tend to warm up to changes to the Souls formula over time. So maybe if I push through and finish it, I'd feel different. Not really important. The main thing that made me bounce, bounce was how skin deep the aesthetic was in comparison to the inspirations. FromSoft games aren't just aren't good just because they're dark and mysterious. The presentation builds emotional themes that the players pick up on, even if they don't logically understand the plot. Even if you can't explain what the outer gods are, you probably notice the emphasis on space and stars in Elden Ring. No, not really. You might not know what, what the moon presence is, but you are likely to notice themes of body horror and birth imagery in Bloodborne. Yeah, that's true. Liza P has a bunch of superficial references to the original story. The, sh the Shrine Maiden is the Blue Fairy. Gemini is G Gemini is Gemini. Wait, Gemini is Gemini? Snore? S s oh, Snore is not a character. Okay, s seems like the twist is going to be that the ability to lie makes Pinocchio more human than other puppets. Wait, oh, you haven't even finished it, which is very deep theme according to me when I was in middle school. And as, as long as I'm throwing elbows, fairy tales but dark is one of the lamest genres, primarily for tweens who have just aged out of thinking Kingdom Hearts is cool, but haven't developed good taste yet. Holy shit! My dude is mad that it's a it's based on Pinocchio. All right, you know what? That's fair though. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fair. This this is an okay reason to not like it. Lies of P is what happens when the Dark Souls Two fan makes a game. My biggest disappointment with video games. I'm ready. I'm ah. Oh, I can't read it. All right, well, this was fun. I hope you enjoyed getting me getting my comeuppance. It's hilarious that you're so tilted for the first time with reviews not liking the game rather than rather than not hating it. I think most reviews like it. I think we're fo focusing on the negative here. It seems like uh, like the response is mostly positive. Let's end on a high note. Watch Iron Pineapples review. I'm not going to be a React Andy. No way. We're not doing that. I'm not going to steal from Iron Pineapple. Baldur's Gate 3. And now we're going to play some more... Uh, we're going to play some more... Whatchamacallit? Um, Lies of P. We're going to see a new game plus. Oh, we have to we have to take break too. We're at two hours. Uh, f before I take break, five minutes. We'll get into the game. And we'll we'll see, show some of it before we, before we go. Nah, I shouldn't. We should just we should just take break. 
Uh, thank you, Kraken, for giving me a shout out after the raid yesterday. That's in my feed for some reason. Thank you, Kraken. Thank you, Vexon837. You were all good, right? You behaved yourselves. Thank you, Vexon837, for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Emo Man, for the new sub as well. Welcome, welcome. While the stream was down. Thank you, Trolley Chan, for the for the resub. Jake the Snake for the resub. Evans111 for the resub. Mr. Dubois for gifting out a, a sub. Zero Vault for a, a shit ton of bits mid October, right? That's too many bits, Zero Vault. I'm 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 cool with the like uh, you know there's a stream here's some bits for for the hours of the entertainment the stream is gonna provide that seems like the deal that's that's too many bits in, in one in one go thank you for them but like that's unnecessary you've already given so many bits there well thank you thank you Durkashid for the resub but yes mid October yeah uh, October 23rd we'll be back thank you Durkashid for the resub thank you Sifu Doka we should play Sifu for the resub I should call her thank you Sir Nika for the resub thank you Ace Asa Gohan. Asa Gohan? Asa Gohan? For the resub? Hopefully it's one of those. Zephorix512, the other Zephorix name that we have here, for the resub. Yulin for the resub. Sleepy Griffin for the resub. Antipox334 for the resub. Aluminium for the resub. Or some say aluminium. Min minum? Aluminum? Aluminum? How would you say that? Aluminum. Aluminium. Thank you, Rifleman, for the resub. Cardi C for the resub. Jay Z102 for the resub. Mr. Du Bois for gifting out five more subs. Thank you, Mr. Du Bois. Zenoviel. Oh, God. Zenoviels? Zenoviels? Is my. Oh, Zenoviel. Zen Zenovia is my waifu. Zenovia. Who is Zenovia? Zenovia. She has blue hair. High school DX. Oh god! All right, whatever. Congrats on that taste for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Lemon Dread for the resub. True Lacomo for the resub. Animated Huey for the resub, and James But Okay for gifting out a sub as well. Thank you, James But Okay. Let us get into. Um, do you think we can get back to the hotel real quick? And then we can put some music on for break. Strength build, but plus, plus heaviest weapons. I want to see if I can just block and, and, and punish. Two negative comments you missed were from the developers who saw Dark Souls 2 full game and from the masterminds who watched Bloodborne playthrough on YouTube and decided to create their own game. These are both different views. Holy shit. Holy shit. Your content and attitude basically got me through a very rough patch of, of life a couple years ago, so there's no, no such thing as too many. Well, I'm glad I helped you with that, Zero Vault. Was it the streams or the videos? There you are. Frozen Feast Charge R2 only playthrough. <laughs> it's a pretty good sword. Both the rare both enjoyer. Oh, are we on? Oh shit! It's on new game. Oh. Oh, I hit new game by accident, and then it became a new save file, so it hit continue. All right, load. All right, this one. I live for the vids. My wife and I watch them together, together quite happily. I wish there were more. Hopefully soon. All right, here we go. Whoops, wrong button. Okay, we definitely want to stick with our own weapon for now until we get to the, to the station. What's our weight like? 59. Kraken was like, oh, the Joms has spread when we showed up Joms. What do you mean? It was the origin of Joms. Coming to Joms. He thought we were spreading Joms, not originating Joms. But he recognized Joms immediately? Oh god. Oh, this was Jiminy the whole time that was talking.
<laughs> think his words were the creator of Joms, I'm honored. Or Jomert? Eh? How does Top Lolly feel about all this? Why all the minus twos? I don't understand. We're on the hate pun arc. Is it because I did the eh afterwards? If I hadn't done that, it would have been plus twos? Joms. Joms. Man, they really need to make this parry timing better. Nothing wrong with this game. It's fine. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Workshop Union Lightweight Frame. Oh, hold on. So everything's plus one now? On new game. Is it plus two in new game plus two? That would be an interesting system. That is a lot of defense for a little weight, huh? Is it way the same? No, it's a little heavier. Okay. I do worry that if I made a video on this singing its praises that it would have come across as like, oh, the guy who who hates Elden Ring is shilling out another from uh, another souls like, even though I don't even hate Elden Ring, but I know that's how it's gonna come across. <sighs> God damn it. As we at the start. Level up, level up. Uh what do you want to do? I think we want just more stamina. Let's get them all to 40. Hips are a little bit, yeah. Didn't you give Eldering a 10 out of 10? I think I think Eldering is probably around an 8 for me. The highs of Eldering are better than the highs of this game for sure, but it has just It's just too fucking long. So this is 8.5, so it's better. I think I might enjoy this better than Elden Ring. Again, like, if you distilled all the great parts of Elden Ring, you would have a game that's longer than this. But it's just... There's just too much shit. Long game value, that's true. This is why it sucks to, to score things. It's like, there are variant Sudokus that I would rate higher than Elden Ring, chat, but that doesn't mean that... I would pick that El that variant Sudoku over like not having you played Eldering. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's it's like it's such a weird thing to score a game. Evolve Idol or Elden Ring. Yeah, that's another good example. Like, I've gotten more enjoyment out of Evolve Idol than I have Elden Ring, and there's been a lot of really cool moments in Evolve Idol, but, like, would I, would I trade, like, Evolve Idol never having that for Elden Ring? Probably not. Like, I'd give Evolve Idol a better score. How many 10, 10 out of 10s have you ever given? I don't really give scores out like that. I'm just, like, giving it out a number just to kind of give a an, an impression of what I feel. I don't give out numbers. The most famous score I've ever given a game has been Odyssey, which I gave a 6 out of 10.
because I was like, I'm already getting shit for not liking enough, so I might as well just go whole hog. And that's true, it is a 6 out of 10 to me. Six out of ten is slightly positive. Yeah, I I like Odyssey. There's stuff to like in Odyssey. It's just that a lot of it is a waste of time. A lot of parallels between that and Elden Ring, actually. But Elden Ring is much better. The camera in Odyssey is so good. All right, should we just run through to the boss? Would you rate Witcher three a nine out of ten? You're gonna have to wait and find out. See, you can dodge away from it. There's no way you play the whole game and don't realize that you can just dodge out of the way, right? Is there anyone who chat who played this game and didn't realize that? There's no way you played Elden Ring three times and still think the bosses do are too hard, not balanced. What do you mean? Elden Ring's fights are not too hard. <laughs> They're too hard to kill in the way that I like to play, in a way that makes them hitless. Like, it's really easy to just, like, hit trade them down. I did notice on my own and you could parry red attacks until I saw it on stream. I skipped the tooltip because fuck that, that shit. Oh, you didn't know you could you could parry them. You just thought you had to like what avoid them. The bosses aren't particularly challenging. No, they're they're very challenging. Like it's just that to do them in the way that I like to play, it's just silly. It's too hard. The amount of work you have to do to learn all the all the mechanics there is is beyond what I like to invest in these games. How'd you like to play? I'm not getting hit for the most part. He said it's too I also said it in the video, yeah. I like the rain here. So I feel a little confused by the question. I tried for a, many hours. I think I tried for about four hours to kill Millennia in the way that I wanted to play. And after that, I just went, fuck it put on two ultra heavy great swords and just more or less just hit traded her down and I killed her in two tries. So it's not that the game is like hard to like beat the fight. It's that learning the fight that you can just complete have a total mastery over it is way too hard for what I want to put into the game for how it works. You can do it and I say that in the video too. Like if you're patient enough, you can definitely do all the fights hitless. You can definitely have complete total mastery of how all the fights work or everything. But to me, it's just not worth it. Sekiro is worth it to do it that, that way. And Sekiro is harder than Elden Ring IMO. This game is probably worth it more. And I think this game is probably harder than Elden Ring as well. It's probably not harder to do them hitless though. But it, it will in, it, um, add a lot of in time and investment to do it. But Elden Ring is just not worth it. Like, in this game, you're doing a lot of, and Sekiro 2, you're doing mostly animation reading and learning the ebb and flow of a fight and feeling it out. In Elden Ring, you have to basically learn how the enemy AI works and gain the AI in your favor and just know the spreadsheet that the, the enemy is following. And once you've gained that and you know how it responds to all the different positioning changes, then you can anticipate it like you're morbing through the fight. And that is, I can't think of an action game that I would like to do less. <laughs> 
<laughs> than that, you know? Like, no thank you. I'd rather, like, get really good at Devil May Cry or something, you know? What are some tips you would give to young authors writing their first fantasy novels? Uh, don't take advice from people who had to self-publish their work on Amazon and then had to launch a streaming career when it didn't take off as well as they wanted it to. That's not being really fair to me, but you know, it's a good joke. It sounds funny. Deflected. Whoops! I accidentally deflected again. Actually, accidentally. Sorry. You know what? We should do this on new game, not new game plus. Spicy on New Game Plus. Alright, I don't see any new moves. Do you chat? You can read the boss's text. Oh, can we? I didn't even see that. What did it say? Did it say, Carlo, Romeo has a message for you. Please stop hitting me. <laughs> you could have given the king a real festival. Okay. Oh, we got a quartz for that. All right, that's cool. So I'm a little defensive when it comes to talking about Elden Ring because, like, while I got a lot of agreement early on, since then I've been inundated with a lot of really horrible things. So it's like, like, it's not worth it. But, like, it's a good game. And if you like what I'm describing, I, I don't think you're you're bad to do that. Like, I'm, if anything, I'm a bit envious. But, like, to me, it's just not a fun time. The, don't let me spoil your enjoyment. But I am someone who really likes those games. I liked all of Dark Souls. I like most of Elden Ring. I like Bloodborne. I love Sekiro. And I would like to see FromSoft's boss design um, move in a different direction that isn't what Elden Ring went into. I was expecting them to go more in the Sekiro direction um, with it instead of... The direction they chose to go into. If you like that direction, then great. Like that, that's a good game for you. I hope the series does it even better next time for you. Not every game has to be for me. I'm fine with that. But at the same time, though, I am a fan of those series, and I felt like I had every right to say what I did. You know, like. Like, the amount of, like, points I've had against me that have basically been saying, like, no, if only you engaged in this different way, you would have liked it. And it's like... Who the fuck do you think you are that you know my tastes, man? Like, how do you know that I didn't do that? Is it because you ignored the part in the video when I said I did? <laughs> like, it's like, 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 come on, like, it's not for me. And that's fine, just let it go. Uh, let's just keep going with what we did before. Human. Should we lie every single time? Do you think it's a worthy endeavor for devs to make UI elements... 
movable like MMOs. I'm not a huge fan of needing to look at different corners of the screen for rather info than centering everything if it's ugly. Oh yeah, yeah. I think in in the best uh, in an ideal world you could do that with every UI. Yeah, more customization is is better, especially if it's behind locked behind like a warning that in this case someone does it accidentally and they fuck it up because that's the only reason uh, you wouldn't want to do it. Uh, anyway, for the person who asked about fantasy writing, um. Like, like seriously, like I know I did a joke, but really I don't. I don't know if I have advice for you. The the advice I have for that is general advice that I always have for how to learn anything. Just read as much as you possibly can, like experience as much as as you're of what you're trying to work on yourself, and see what you like about it, what you don't. Develop a critical eye for appraising it, because you can learn so much from what other people have already done. But that's just general life advice. If you want something specific to fantasy, then you know I'd have to know what your goals are. Like, maybe you maybe you fucking love Lord of the Rings and you want to make the next Lord of the Rings. I hate Lord of the Rings, so I don't hate it. But I don't like Lord of the Rings and how it works. So if I tell you like, oh, you know, make sure you don't do too much world building, and if you do do a lot of world building, make sure you only bring it up when it's relevant. You might be like, well, Joe, I want to do the world building, and the audience I'm trying to cater to loves it too. It'd be like, oh, okay, well, fuck. Like, now I've just given you bad advice. It's a waste of time. Is the Trident that good? It not feeling my playthrough? I like it because of the crit, and also we invested all of our time into it, so we, we stuck with it. I'd like to try a different weapon. Maybe there's a better weapon for me. Where is the Dag? Would you consider changing weapon up for this new game plus? Yeah, I, wa I want to upgrade a weapon to plus 5, and then we're going to change it. But we're time to take breaks. So let me put some music on, and then we'll go. Do you understand if you make a video on uh, on of P, uh, you would make sales go up significantly? You were in control of Destiny? That's not true. I don't think I encourage sales on the channel. I think I sell more games as a streamer than I do as a, as a video maker. Although I do... Some people buy games before they watch the video, for sure. But I don't think that. Thank you so much for not just saying practice. I hate seeing that advice for anything because it assumes the listener will know how to evaluate themselves and figure out what to improve. Well, I, I kind of did say practice, but I said practice in a specific way, right? Maybe that's what. Anyway, we're back. I'll put some music on. What do you want? First person to say the name of a song gets it.
Flocons de neige qui brille dans le ciel nocturne. Alright, I'm back. Okay, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We should level up. Okay, so I want to run to the next boss and see if it has unique moves. That's what I want to do. I also want to find the... Can I upgrade the weapon? I also want to find the... Do where do we get the dogman from? Take Question from the dude who didn't upgrade his weapon in Dark Souls 1 until Quay like, do you think it's harder for people who have already played the other From games, which tend to be faster to get into Dark Souls 1? That's been the case for me. Doesn't seem like it's been the case for you. You've like kicked the game's ass if you went all the way to Quay like without upgrading your weapon. You, you should have had like a plus three weapon by now. Maybe you know a plus four or five by the time you get to Quay like. Okay, I don't want to use the Weep Sword. I don't want to do it. I would say yes, it's a change of pace. Uh, Dark Souls 1 is a lot more methodical, and that's one of the reasons why people like it so much, actually. People who are big fans of it. Oh, that... Wait, hold on. It, it only shows the blade. It doesn't show the hilt. Do you think originally you were meant to take these out and put them on different handles? Look at that, see? The hilt is actually gone on that one. In here, it's cropped out. Do it? I don't know if I can, is the problem. Ah, yeah, whatever, let's try. Maybe we can get like a, some pog parries. Okay, it's uh, lighter, right? So what can we put on instead now? Can we take this off? No. Will you ever go back to Bayonetta or God of War on harder difficulties? Mm, I doubt it, but I would like to play Bayonetta 2. And 3. I really like Bayonetta. About the book, it's supposed to be a medieval fantasy rather focused on dialogue and politics like Witcher books and world building in Lord of the Rings, where I would include events, conflicts, figures, stories, myths from the past happening in Central Europe, Slovakia, Hungary. Of course, not copy those events, just take inspiration from them, including multiple characters and, show and showing different stuff going on within this land from their points of view. Yeah, that's... Probably on my area, that sounds interesting. Um, do you know any books that are like that? That you would like to learn anything from? Don't do what they do, just understand what you think they do well, and also the mistakes that they make. I'm gonna miss you for the next few weeks, Joseph Schmosef. It's not gonna be that long. We've taken much longer breaks before.
Where is the guy? Whoa, what? Hey, let's be more careful. Ah, the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. <laughs> I hate these guys. But don't be alarmed. My name is Gemini. We'll talk later. Throw I really want to see what weapon the the nameless puppet gave. Elysian Boulevard was a regular rich people row. You wanted fancy boutiques and shops. <laughs> no place better. But What's in the shop? Long ago, the third of the puppet frenzy. What's inside the orange box? Frame, okay. No! Ooh, too late. Too early. Okay, I like the added difficulty of the parry here, but... I don't know if I want to learn this right now. I like that if you fuck it up, you still get an attack out of it. Oh, you can move while it's charged, too. That's neat. Is it break for any particular reason? Uh, three reasons. And they're all witchers. That is way too fast. Okay, getting it a little bit, but it's very tricky. Are you gonna unironically finish it, or is it a maybe? Uh, I'm not gonna finish it in time for when we come back in October. There's probably gonna be another break after that, um, but. Uh, if I don't finish it by the end of the year, I'm deleting all my platform. Or I'm just gonna just stop coming back. I think it'd be pretty stupid to delete the whole channel, but like I won't there'll be no more videos, no more streams, it'll just be gone. Up with it anymore. I can't do it. Picking one element or mechanic from this game for From Software and Plant for the next Souls, like or maybe even Eldering, what would it be? Uh, probably the deflection system. I think the deflection system would solve a lot of the issues I have with um, FromSoft's current boss philosophy in Eldering, but only in Eldering. Like, they, they can make the bosses. Like, look at uh, Sekiro. They know how to do it, they just didn't for Eldering for some reason. Again, me saying, saying that though, like, has my biases all over it. Like, for some people, they really like what the Elden Ring did. Way more than Sekiro. So, but you did ask for me, right? But some people might not hear that if they heard me say that out of context. It was about my tastes. Um, it wouldn't fix it completely, but it would go a long way. I'm checking my schedule. Sites since Metal Gear will be out by the time you're done with Alan Wake 2. I assume you'll do the next set of the voted games. Uh, probably, yeah, probably. 
Not not saying yes for sure, but probably yeah. Wasn't there a shortcut by now? Maybe we just we're, oh, there's the stargazer. Let's get that and then we'll fight this guy. Oh, for fuck's sake! I want to use the new parry on this guy too. Oh yeah, I forgot it. The first one has a dodge. How is that not a deflect? Not playing very well, chat. Sorry. We got him, though. We got him. Can I write to you on Twitter with more specific information about this book? It's a bit difficult to organize my thoughts in those in those Swiss messages. XD. Uh, I don't check any of my messages on Twitter. The more likely chance you'll have is on Discord, but I don't check my DMs very often on Discord too. I do eventually check them, but it might be a while. I have a, I have a lot of DMs on Discord at the moment. I also have a lot of Discord DMs from people who aren't on my friends list, and apparently that shows up differently. So, oh. When does when does this get fixed? From the other side, maybe. Why, hello. I know Don't worry. For your info. But Discord is the the better chance you have. Go oh, it's a golden record this time. So get them on gold version for the new game plus. Huh. I missed one as well. Yeah. I'm not trying to play the game very thoroughly in New Game Plus right now, chat. I'm trying to get to the next boss to see if it has any different moves. And I also want to see what weapon the puppet gave. I don't know, I, overall I think the game was really good, but maybe I'm just riding too high on it at the moment. I don't know, man. Jeepers. Is that a butterfly? Why is the air go reacting like that? If you want to check it out, I can take point. Most people agree the game the game slaps. Like I think the game slaps. How can it slap? Parry a red attack with this. Seems like yes. Wow, it's so strong. Holy fuck. Why did we get two? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, is it because you can mix more handles with it? Like, let's say you want more than one weapon with the same handle and you want to switch between it? Hmm. Oh, you, they're storage, right? You can put them in storage. Okay. Anyway, yeah, in case you weren't here earlier, we're going on break after the stream. This is the last stream until October 23rd. We're going to come back and we're going to play Alan Wake 1 into Alan Wake 2, which is coming out that week. Alan Wake 2 is a new game. It's coming out on October 27th. So we're going to be playing that and we're going to play the first game first. Um, because we locked it in. It looked interesting when it was revealed that the, the game, whatever, when it came out. I don't know. So we're doing that. Um, and then we are on break again for a little bit until sometime in November. And then I will be back in November to try out Baldur's Gate 3. And Baldur's Gate 3 will run for a limited amount of time unless it is an absolute banger. If it's an absolute banger, then it might have to go on pause and then I will finish it when I'm done with the video. But I will know by the time we're back in November if I'm going to be done in time or not. What about um, Alan Wake American Nightmare? I don't know what that is. Is that the LC? 
<clears throat> but Yeekmas, Joe? Let's get the video done before we talk about Yeekmas. But yeah, if all goes well and we have time to stream in December, it'll be uh, Yakuza Mess. We'll play Yakuza Kiwami 1 and 2, and then we'll play uh, Happy New Yeek at some point. We'll interrupt Yakuza Mess if we have to, to have Happy New Yeek. That's the plan. So lots of things coming. But a turnout night's wife's? I heard a turnout's wasn't very good. And it wasn't going to be good streams. We'll do one to see. I don't know when. Lock it out. Lock it out. Purge puppets. Come out, Geppetto! Yeah! Yeah, he does. You're right. You know what caused you... What's your problem? Wait, you're the You can't sneak past me. You can't be me. Cursed puppet! Back again! showing up already. What does that mean? Oh, he moves. He can attack fast with that thing. Holy shit. Okay, these lines meant to be for like if you die then come back and try it again. I demand it. The truth. Now okay. I feel bad. The uh, puppet versus other puppet fights are not very good. The human fights, it's I don't like them. They're the worst part of the game, I think. I, but in order. Enigma is somebody tool. I'm so I uncomfortable with this weapon, man. I want to use the star to catch up. I'm so uncomfortable with this weapon. It's cool though. This definitely seems like the expert mode weapon for getting the uh, special parry. Leave to the stream, so I don't know if you addressed this earlier in the review section. How do you feel about the criticism that the game should have had the dodge upgrades from the start and they removed usability for the sake of the skill tree? Mm, I think that the one from the floor should probably be in, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world that you can upgrade it. Because when you're on the floor, you're invincible, mostly. I don't think you can get hit while you're getting up. So about that there are some uh, combos that can hit you while you're down. The guy, the big guy with the shovel that's on fire, can do that. But I think the other ones, you, you know, you're fine getting up. Saying it's just basic core functionality is a little dis disingenuous because after you get that upgrade, rolling off the floor from some moves that knock you down is a lot of free hits on the boss. Because a lot of the most bosses don't punish that. So if you roll, I noticed I was getting a ton of free time or a free heal. You know, it's it really does feel like an upgrade. It's like luxury time added to the combat. But for use for the sake of um, usability, they could have just made it so enemies reacted better to that, and it was from in there from the game from the beginning. Yeah.
But it would be cool to see how Sakura feels now. Yeah, I played it earlier today, just uh, I did like the first tutorial area, and I would like to play it again today uh, during stream to see how it feels in comparison. So maybe we'll do that, and you all can see how bad I am at Sakura, because I am really bad. I died to the first pack. I tried the parry, and the timing in that is different than the, than the parry in this game. Okay, we don't need to do that. We're going to, uh, where are you going? Can you look at the Annihilation Corpse? What's that? Stories in it. The, the baby? Oh, yeah, we didn't talk to her for the baby, so maybe there's gonna be a different line that says, What's this? Have you tried Wo Long? No, I would like to, but I heard it didn't run it didn't uh, run very well. Or it didn't ran very well. It didn't ran no, it didn't run very well. And I was waiting for patches, and apparently it's just never gonna happen. That feels so satisfying to use, man. Oh man, that's a lot of damage too. It ran fine for me personally. Oh, does it? Oh, maybe it's uh, I can I can play it then. Okay, did I get the baby? Wasn't it in here? Maybe you can only loot the baby after you talk to her. I thought it was over there with that guy. Wolong's combat is very satisfying. Alright, so this is the first real boss, and uh, he's a doozy, man. Like, this boss is no joke. Let's see if there are new moves. Trial of Frozen Trip and Frozen Bandit by you. Thank you, Romeo. So I think we can kill him, but let's see, does he have new moves? What do you think? It doesn't look like it, right? It's a grab. Oh, we're dead! Oh, man. I haven't seen new moves in my playthrough. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there's new ones. One thing you did notice for leveling, leveling cost caps around 16k and only goes up by one. One, one, uh, ergo. I think someone said that uh, the other stream. Maybe I read it and I didn't read it out loud. 
That's interesting. I kind of like that, actually. It means that you can keep investing in your character as new game goes on instead of you uh, getting out of range. I wonder what the soft cap is for a lot of the stats. Did I miss a stargazer? Am I going the wrong way? I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. What do you think about grabs not having any sort of signal apart from the windup? I hate it. I hate grabs uh, in all these games. I don't like that you can't block them, even though they're not red. I hate them. It's one of the rare times that I think taking a sledgehammer to the problem would fix it. Like, just take them out. Of all these games. They look cool, but, like, fuck, they feel awful. I hate them. I don't think it's how they're done either, because I can't think of a single game where the grabs feel good. Even in Sekiro, which telegraphs them a little bit better, I, I hate the grabs. It also feels like they don't care about making the timing uh, good on the grabs in Sekiro. Chained Ogre's grab is like legit one of the hardest uh, moves to dodge in the game. literally so easy. Yeah. What do you mean? Sometimes the perilous warning sound com like comes out at the same time that you are grabbed. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just bad at that, but I feel like uh, Chained Ogre's grab is, is complete horseshit. Okay, maybe we should stop doing the fancy uh, parry, Joe. Said, trying to do it again. Do you think grabs just need very clear tells, highlights, symbols, etc.? Do you think they shouldn't exist at all? In theory, I think if they made it more clear, then that would solve the problem. But I wonder if it just it just feels bad to get landed by a grab that even if they did telegraph them better, that it would still suck. It just... It never feels like you're dodging or dealing with a state the enemy goes into, and instead you're just dealing with a stance. And after you fuck up the stance, then you get hit. So you just look at it and it just feels inherently bullshit. Like, Bloodborne is a, has a lot of those attacks where 
the boss just starts to run at you and you you get locked in and, and then the enemy hits you, you know what I mean? And that feels like shit. The one that this boss does is not the worst example, I think. Chat disagree. I have no opinion. Smart. Generally, the point of gravity is something you need to dodge and can't block or dodge. No, I, and I think their visuals fit the mechanic demand perfectly, so I don't think you should cut them out. I just don't think they work well. Like, I know this boss, I've died to him a lot, and even just then, I just thought that was a regular attack. <laughs> like, I thought, like, my brain went, okay, time to parry this, and then when I was grabbed, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, that's the grab, isn't it? So... And like I said, it just feels, it feels bad. You get locked in, it's like rubbing your face in the failure. They can look cool, but they feel awful. Skill issue? It could be a skill issue, yeah. But I just don't think I've ever enjoyed the implementation of a grab. The way I've enjoyed other, like, like soft fail states in games. What? Is it faster in this phase? Oh man. Owns. Owns.
owns, owns, owns. All right, maybe I'm should go back to the trident because that's the one I'm used to now. I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm being debated into trying to do the fancy parry because it's fun to do. I've never been a gamers are entitled Andy, uh, but listening to Chuds talk about parry timing like something you need to fix it makes me feel fucked off. <laughs> I think that I would be f fine with it, and it's not even I think. I know I would be fine with it if they were saying it's too hard, and I think they should make it a bit more lenient. But phrasing it like it's broken and needs to be fixed is where it becomes a, all right, I can listen to you, to, okay, I'm getting annoyed. I think that's the part. And I think I could agree that maybe they could ease up on the timing a little bit to make it easier, or, or have like a, an amulet that, that increases the timing or whatever. But saying that it's fucking broken is is the part where, you know, you lose me. And this is coming from someone who's bad at it too, right? Like look at me fucking fucking this up on the first boss. really growing on me chat i like that i the the possibility that once i get more comfortable with the fight i can start weaving in these things in. like i know i can hard carry that move so i'm trying to even though i'm still fucking up a little bit but i like it yeah he's definitely faster in phase two with that i didn't realize does a different move too. Ah, fuck. I'm full health. Will it kill me? There's no way, right? Oh my god, almost. Man. Yeah. All right, cool. I find the block mechanic needs a level of physical dexterity that my hand simply cannot manage, but it's clearly not broken. The game is too meticulously constructed for that. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think there should be accessibility options for people that can still get into that mode. I think we can do the P organ now, can't we? That fight was... Still fun the second time, man.
You can get a haircut. Change to long hair. We have long hair. Oh, you can change back to the long dark hair. All right, what is the other one? Change to long gray hair, change to short hair. All right, I like this hair the best, actually. I don't like the white hair. Uh, always speaking, my friend. Is Geppetto a good or a bad guy? Um, unclear. Remember, be careful. Be wary. I think the bad guy. We have four. All right, so we need four on this one. Perfect guard, weapon durability recovery, or add a weapon slot. I, we don't have the space for that. I think uh, extra healing is the best one to get. Is there like a rank five of these? Oh my, ranks it. There is. Holy shit. Enhances attack when HP is at maximum. Enhance ambush stagger. Enhance condensed legion. Condensed legion. Enhances legion arm attack when more than half of legion remains. Enhances attack when durability is at maximum two. Okay. Oh, pulse cell use. Nice. Increase weapon durability recovery speed. Naturally recovers durability of the weapons too. Lowers durability consumption of slashing weapons. I think this is a slashing weapon. Let's take it. Is there more ergo? Increases ergo upon defeating an enemy. That's good. And then what's what's the other one? We didn't take one of the enhanced ones. What do we want? Enhanced stagger from behind. Enhanced ambush stagger. I, none of these are good for us actually. Enhances weapon attack when durability is at maximum too. Like I mean, how much more? Let's find out. Fatal isn't fatal attack from is fatal attack the one where you where you knock him down? Oh fuck that would have been good, yeah. My bad. Now that we have us, nobody that's why we're both here. That's all I can all We do that a lot. I looked it up in the chatter was not lying about phase seven in new game plus plus. You can indeed get an upgrade to guard red attacks, cool stuff. Yeah, that opens up a lot of uh play uh and builds when you've already uh, demonstrated that you've conquered the game. That's an interesting idea, I like it. Whoa. Wait, what? So that's why the door's locked here, and it's and it's tucked away. Because on New Game Plus, you can always come back here to uh, respect yourself. Interesting. Did you keep your new unused quartz since the New Game Plus? Yes. It seems like it. Because I had four, and I don't think I earned four just yet. Okay, let's get the dog, and we'll see what the weapon was that Nameless Puppet gave. I hope it's the the needle, because that weapon looked really cool. And then uh, after that, we will uh, we'll play some Sekiro for a bit and see how Sekiro compares with the parry timing, and see how bad I am at it. They really thought out New Game Plus a fair amount, huh? Yeah, they did. I don't know how this stacks up to the Souls games, because I don't really buy into to New Game Plus uh, that much in those. I've dicked around a little bit with them, but not too far. I don't know, my memory's so shot now when it comes to all this stuff. Maybe I did New Game Plus and Dark Souls 1 all the way through, but I think that's it. Did you test Lost Souls and run back? Oh, we didn't do that! Hold on, okay, so let's see. So right now, here I have... The Nini works. Everything you see here belongs to the Nini. The classiest playboy and most brilliant inventor in cross. You know what, let's get, let's get the next uh, Stargazer. Not just puppets. Almost every machine and tram and crowd is supplied from here. You gotta be curious about the guy. What kind of Dark Souls 2 is the best new game plus. I might have done one of Dark Souls 2 as well. I definitely did new game I didn't do new game plus of Bloodborne, Sekiro, and uh and Dark Souls 3. I know that for sure. I might have killed like a boss in Sekiro. Does Sekiro have a new game plus in must, right? Okay, so we have 12,278 souls. Can we open this? We can't, shit. 12,278, and I'm just gonna jump off here and die. 
I'm just gonna jump off here and die. Fuck. Oh, I know where to test it. Calculated. 100% calculated. Okay, so you can get pretty much unlimited cranks for swapping uh, the scalings around because of the moths or the butterflies that you can kill for each run. All right, here's where I want to go. So I'm going to go here, and there's a pit down the the flaming ball area that we can just jump down and die instantly. All right, good. So we can test this easily here. So we have 12,899. All right. How many endings of Sakura have you done? All of them. Maybe I did do New Game Plus to see one of the other endings then. I've done all of them. I just don't remember doing it. Alright, 12, 8, 9, 9. So we jump off. Alright, so now there's a blood stain right there that has 12, 8, 9, 9. Now, every single time we get hit, that blood stain loses a bit of its soul. So, what someone said was that if you die again now, that blood stain doesn't go away. So you can get it back. My understanding is if I die again now, that blood stain is gone forever. So, what do, how do we want to test this? Do I just want to die again and see if it goes away? Ooh, excuse me. Let's do that. Let's let's test. I don't want to get hit. All right. So right now it's twelve thousand eight hundred ninety-nine on it. All right. I go over here. I die. What happens to it? It's down to four thousand three hundred and twenty-one. I just saw it. It dropped right away when as I fell down. Four thousand three hundred twenty-one. Four three two one. All right. What if I die again? That was way more than half. Maybe it's because of New Game Plus. One four four eight. So it goes down to one third. Okay. What if I get souls, and then I die? Okay, does poison damage make me lose souls? Okay, getting normal damage makes me lose souls. Alright, and you get them back if you hit the enemy. Alright, so poison damage, I'm not losing souls. Okay, so if I die here right now... I have 1448 on the other blood stain, and I'm gonna have 626. It's 626 again, my curse number. 626 is gonna be on this blood stain. So, what's gonna happen? Okay, we have 1062. So, if they add together a minus one third of 1448, what would the number be? What's one third 1448 plus 1062? Like 500? No, that's more. That's half. Half of it went. Yeah, that's more, right? 
This time it was cut in half. So if you have some souls on you, it gets cut in half instead of one third. Really? Let's try. Oh shit. Just any souls at all. Alright, we have 522. So this should be 522 plus 900. No, that, it didn't, that, that's not how it goes. I understand it. Maybe it's the more souls you have, the more, the less reduction it gets. It's one third the souls on the ground, then adds the new souls to it. I don't think it, that was one third of the souls on the ground, though, because it it's too high. Because there was 1,400 souls there, right? Did it, and I think it added 700, didn't it? I don't know. We'd have to go back and see the numbers. They're, they're fuzzy in my head now. I'm not sure. 489 was the third, plus 522. We had more than five. We had more than 522, though. We had 626 and then we killed something else. So all of the souls that we were carrying on our person should have been 100% dropped, right? Because that's how it works. No? What do you mean no? You had 1062, yeah? So how many did we have when, when after we died that time? How many were on there? Wasn't it 1500? Or was it, was it 1800? Yeah, so it was more. It wasn't a third this time. It was more, right? Oh, shit. So the more souls you have, the less the reduction is. Uh, from on the souls that are already on the ground waiting for you to pick them up, it seems like. Or the lower the number gets, the less the reduction is in some way. I'm not sure. I think the bigger the hit, the more you lose. We're not dying from a hit, though. Oh, do you think dropping in the pit is the hit of all of our health? Uh, hmm... Eh, who cares? It's not really that important. Where's Dogman? Is it after this boss? It's in the Archbishop area. Hmm, okay. Dogman is at the elevator just before Pius or Anus. Oh, that's pretty far in. I want to see the weapon though. All right, how do I how do I get to the boss here? I forget. Is it lowering this? Maybe we're there already. Does this game have a boss rush mode? Seems like it would be really sweet to have something similar to God Home and Hollow Knight. Yeah, I I hope it does. If it does, I haven't found it yet. I didn't look around the the hotel, so maybe it's somewhere. If it doesn't, I hope they add it to a DLC. I hope they patch it along with the fixes oh, that the uh, parry time and the, the dodging needs. Fit like a glove. Well, like a pipe. <laughs> that fit. At least Which the glove did, parts uh, do. I hope he's all right. Uh. 
Oh shit. Wasn't there a stargazer in here? Is this game good or I love it? Yeah, I was memeing when I said about the parry timing and dodging needing fixed. It doesn't it doesn't need to be fixed. If I'm good at games with bad LCP, does that mean LCP is in a game? Yes. If those statements are true, yes. Wasn't it up top? You could go up top and... Okay, it's up there. You failed the city. That sounds like Vine Sauce doing a funny voice. Well, his name is Vanini. All right, here we go with the katana. I don't know if I can do this with the katana. I also want to see if the parry, uh, hard parry can can block, uh, can parry red attacks. It probably can, yeah. Maybe we should go try and see what the summons are like. Yeah, we're, we're just doing this to get to the dog man, so maybe we can see what the summons are like. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. We didn't do a summon in our new game run. What are your thoughts on the whole live versus truth mechanic? Eh, I don't really care. Okay, we're gonna summon a specter. All right, we have a lot of star fragments. Okay, and now he's just gonna be here in the fight? Oh, hey dude, nice weapon. He's a tanky boy. And he's dead. Okay. All right then. And it's gone. Maybe not good on New Game Plus. Oh, I agree with you, Chatter. The kick is uh, nasty. Deet. Deet. Alright chat, forgive me, but I'm going back to the trident. Trident true. I 
I'm used to the trident. And I keep trying to do the fancy parry and it's killing me. My hubris is killing me. Is it always the same weapon? Reddit weapon is bad. Is it really the Reddit weapon? It's always the same weapon. Interesting. Carry them back. to get rid of overheat. Yeah, of course you can. That's just math. Damage is scaled pretty high for New Game Plus, I gotta say. And the problem here is not the weapon, but the player. I think I did a lot better with this weapon now that I'm not trying to, uh, to do the fancy parry. But the problem is the player, yes. The player needs to play better. Okay, let's see. Third time's a charm. If it's the same weapon this time, I won't do it again. Well, we'll do it on the next boss to see if it's a different weapon there too. Is it always the same weapon? Mm, seems like it, okay. My free damage! Hit him! 
him! What are you doing? That was a parry, right? Oh, you know what? I probably could've killed him there. You know what they say though, better safe than pregnant. Four tries? Four tries not bad considering how much I died on this boss the first time. Not a real kill you expected. Yeah, it's true. Still a bit underwhelmed with this one. Yeah, that's probably my least favorite boss in the game. Not only does he not have that many moves, uh, some of his moves are really annoying. Pretty forgettable. Could it be that Miyazaki FromSoft did make did not make the best souls like this year? Oh, Miyazaki's. Uh, Fingerprints are all over this, Wuggy. He made this game. With his second team. He made it while wearing uh, glasses and a mustache. And like a fat nose. Go away, go away! Could they be from go away, go away! Town? Whoa, did puppets do this? Ah ha! Ah ha ha! Idiot! Yeah, you're silly. You're dumb. Oh shit! Ah ha ha ha! Yeah! Oh sh what? I'm at the check. Does this guy drop a quartz? Okay, what did we say last time? Do you want to go up the cathedral? Are you? Give the stalkers greeting. We did nothing last time, right? 
What did we do? I can't remember. Do nothing. You've been warned. I am <laughs> shit. Child, only the worthy may pass. Down here is better than devouring terror above. What happens if you run out of time? Uh, Yorvith just attacks you, and then uh, Triss has to make a, uh, a red dome. Cherish your life. I do not wish to be The improvement, huh? The improvement. Holy shit. I sent you in Discord my general thoughts and plans about this fantasy novel. Around 600 words, sorry. If you respond within two years, I will really appreciate that. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, welcome uh, real quick, while this is going, I'm gonna go pee. You're back. Because this takes like now, a minute, those of you so who joined it's us in Moonlight Town, we hope your preparations for the pilgrim's journey are well underway. Fascinating town, Moonlight, just fascinating. Back in the day, the only way to reach the cathedral was using a rope and pulley. <laughs> so thanks for building it on a cliff, Saint Frangelico. I kid, I kid, Frangelica. Wonderful saint, wonderful. Anyway, next stop, the Bridge of Atonement. While you atone there, don't miss a magnificent view of the beautiful Crot. <laughs> it's been my pleasure, friends, and enjoy the rest of your journey. I've been your captain on this ride, Gemini! <laughs> well, not bad, huh? Oh, I really am good at this. When in doubt, let Gemini be your guide. <laughs> you, uh, you look annoyed. What I do? Ah, I'm sure it's fine. Let's get a move on, pal. All right, I'm back. The uh, the terrible twos have uh, kicked off majorly with uh, Mila, by the way. Oh man, what a monster, Mila Veli for sure. Thank you to Singularity three one two for the resub. Thank you Fo Ryan for the resub. Thank you Xander Kish for the new sub. Welcome, welcome. Thank you Pi or Yanus for the resub. <laughs> And Paulo Two Gaming for the resub as well. Thank you very much. Thank you again, uh, Singularity Three One Two, because you're the first person I said thank you in that set. So maybe you uh, you didn't hear it when I first did my set. Oh, you off. Silver Sword? What Silver Sword? I recognize dead puppets. That's to be expected. What is that? What Silver Sword? This one? Two dragon sword? I mean, I don't want to. I've already been using it too much. Silver sword for monster. Oh, for monster kid. Oh, you you were making a joke about me killing my child. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't get that. No idea what those things are, pal. Approach with caution. 
Oh, we don't have to kill Archbishop. I remember where he is. Okay, he's on the top. He's up like a ladder or something. I remember now. So we have to get into the church. This falls, doesn't it? Yep. No. I don't know what's going on, but keep those eyes of yours open. Can we save the lady this time? Oh yeah, can we? Can we get the thing for her and go back? I don't think so. Oh, well, that requires killing the boss. I don't know if we're going to kill the boss. It's amazing how many bosses in this game could have been the final boss. The game has no chill. Still opening too big doors, just like Dark Souls? Check. Scenic view of something beautiful but twisted in front of you? Check. Cathedral level? Check. With blood on the floor? Check. Roll through a pew to break it, saying pew pew? Check. Pew pew. Pew pew. Queen to B2, check. Uh, how, how, what position are you in that Queen to B2? Holy crap. Finn has expressed an interest in learning chess again. Last time I tried to teach the boys chess, they would just move whatever piece they wanted to whatever uh, like uh, square they wanted, and then they would just laugh at me when I said this against the rules. But maybe they're, it's ready now. No! He's actually playing on my computer downstairs right now. He's playing Stardew Valley Expanded. Because he loves Stardew Valley and he's, he wanted to play the mod. So he's playing a game with a mouse and a keyboard for the first time. Because the only USB cable that works with the gamepad is plugged into this computer right now for the stream. Get fucked, kid. You should add the middle name Chad to all your kids. So he would be Finn Chad Chad Anderson. Wait, where's the? It's further up, isn't it? Hey Joe, do you do anything to keep your hands healthy? No, and I need to start. I think. I slept on my thumb the other day, and I was in agony. I almost cancelled the stream. My thumb was hurting so bad. Oh, for fuck's sake. Hand stretches? What are the best kind? I slept on my thumb the other day. It was terrible. One of the worst experiences of my life. I gave it a thumbs down all day. I didn't laugh! I didn't 
didn't say eh, come on, plus two, you know what, there's more plus twos this time, that's good, alright, alright. I've solved the puzzle, just don't laugh at your own joke. Minus two by left, then it's a plus two! I could hear the grin, you can't hear a grin! I can feel it with my liver. I feel it with my toes. Basic weapon buff. Damn it, Pinocchio! This one does drop a quartz, and the door opens too. Okay, interesting. What about the boxes you get? You can take back to the store. Does it like refresh their stock? Man, I'm kind of nervous to play Sekiro. What if I'm even worse than I remember being? <laughs> Oh man, I got halfway decent at it. But it's been a while since I played Sekiro. It's been a while. I think I did a, a quick playthrough again for the Elden Ring video, but it was like a like a very quick playthrough, just like blast through it for footage. Surely chat won't believe you at all. They will. They will. People don't watch you for top level gameplay. Yeah, thanks so much, Battaloos. People don't come to you for nice chat messages. The first boss rush is moderately easy. You can start with that. Oh, in Sekiro, you mean? No, I don't know. Just play the game. Oh, shit. Calculated, I wanted to get the butterfly. Calculate, what's in here? Joe, there's a weapon you missed by riding the spinning wheel back at the last bit. Oh, is there? You can ride it up? I didn't, I didn't think it, that would work. Is it a good one? It's amazing, says Wuggy. Wuggy is still on his uh, cursed chatter arc. I'm here for it. Oh, we're back. Wait, what? Oh, I got all turned around. Never mind. You're looking for your car, but you're all turned around. There's blood everywhere.
Okay, Millennia, what the hell? God, the game has so much enemy variety. It's over there. This is where the guy is, right? Who's your favorite Moomin? Probably Mr. Moomin. Share and leave. Oh. Sure, I don't need to know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. You know. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of search. Since you're so help. All right, here we go. Here we go. First of all, we can get this weapon, right? But hold on. It is. Uh, oh wait, hold on. What's the, what's the the immunity to all attribute status ailments? Oh <laughs> what? Holy shit! Not just one? Proof of humanity. Alright, what's this Holy Sword of the Ark? Would this have been our weapon for the run if we had gotten it? Okay, pretty good. Trick weapon? What's the trick? Doesn't look like a trick weapon to me. Fable arts? I don't have any. I don't have any juice. All right, what's this one? Ooh, daddy like. All right, what about? Oh, damn! Is this a trick weapon too? Hey Lily. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the hotel and see what we can do. You can scissor enemies to death. See? Classic Wuggy. Thoughts on Led Zeppelin? Uh, I don't know a lot of Led Zeppelin songs, but what I have heard has usually been pretty good. They meander a little bit too. Pink Floyd does as well. Holy, okay, I really like this one. This is like, I will like four different playthroughs with different weapons I wanna do right now. What's this buff do? Extra damage? That is so cool. And someone said this is a... Uh... Oh. Is that forever? Oh, that's weird. Oh, wow. That's powerful. Has its own moveset, too. Interesting. Too bad it's a heavy weapon, though, and has shit range. Oh, can you hold it down? Is that what you're trying to tell me?
check? What, what, what's the bad thing that you said about the game? Before you said check. I don't see it in chat. Do I have to scroll up? Oh, the, the range on this. Look how far away I am. I'm hitting him. Holy shit. Oh, cool, you can. You can attack and change it. You can string the trans transformations together. Alright, I really like that weapon. That's cool. I don't like how it looks, but I like the effect of it. It looks more like a... Uh, like a display piece than a sword, right? That's what I don't like about it. It looks like it would break. But this is really cool. Does this have a crit chance? Oh my god. Chat, it does. It has 30 crit rate. You know how I feel about crit rate. This is my weapon, chat. I found my weapon. I have found my weapon. Read the LB plus Y. Uh, how? Increases crit hit hit chance temporarily. Ooh. Ooh, to what? Like 100%? Almost. That's cool. That's cool, I like it. I like it a lot. Neat. Alright. Oh, do you think Dark Souls games should make you fight enemies, or do you like that you can run around everything? I like you can just run around everything. I'm, I'm cool with that. Sometimes I wish that they would force you to fight some enemies in some areas, but typically I don't like the run backs anymore. Sekiro time? Yeah, I think we should do Sekiro. If, if we have enough materials to upgrade this weapon, I wouldn't mind going finding fighting Ar Archbishop with it, but I don't think we do. I know my way around. I know my way around a weapon. Yeah, absolutely not. Alright, let's try Sekiro. So, see you later, Eliza P. I don't think we'll ever stream this again. Uh, I love this game. This is one of my favorite games we've ever streamed. One of the biggest surprises uh, since I started the channel and streaming. I really, really enjoyed this. This is one of my new favorite Souls likes. It's not number one. I think Sekiro is still going to be number one, but it's definitely up there. I think it is in the top three. It's a really, really good experience. I had a lot of fun with this. I do agree that the level design is a little lacking. Um, not a little lacking. It's moderately lacking. It's not a huge, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it is lacking and I wish it was better. Uh, but, you know, as a first attempt at this from this developer, they have made other games, I believe, but this is their first attempt at a Souls-like. Uh, absurdly impressive. Absurdly impressive. Um, probably the second best uh, boss combat I've seen in one of these kind of games. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, the bosses themselves, and not just the combat system, the bosses themselves are very varied. Uh, each of them comes with like this package of movesets that you need to learn. Um, I feel like they all have their own kind of theme as well, apart from that fire robot. Like, they, they all have their own kind of flavor. So, it really feels like you're fighting what you're fighting. Has a lot of charm. A lot of soul. Really, really, uh, has a lot of souls in it, I would say. Yeah, it's a good game. I enjoyed it. This might be a weird question, but where does the top three souls like fitting games overall for you? Like, is this top three behind hundreds of games? Uh, they're near the top. I don't know. I don't really th keep things organized like that. If you ask me, I could probably give you like a little list of like top 20 games or whatever, but it might change from time to time. I play a lot of different games, so my taste is pretty broad. Better than Dark Souls 3? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Alright, let me change it to Sekiro before someone gets mad at me. Crosscode is the top three. I don't know if Crosscode is in my top three of all time. I don't think so. How long are we streaming Sekiro for? I don't know, we'll see. An hour? Why black screen? Because the game's not on yet! Are we gonna try the boss rush or, or not? No, we're just gonna play the game normally. Okay, D3D proxy window or just actually Sekiro? What do you want, OBS? Okay, you want that one apparently. Okay. Okay, uh, let me know how the sound is when we get in. I think I had it turned down. Do we want to watch the opening? I don't think we do, right? We're just getting into the game. Have you already read reviews of Sekiro? No. Of uh, Liza P? Yeah, we, we read them already. Uh, sound and display. Let's turn it up. well I made a comment for the final area about how the game was consistently good the, the last area being a bit weak changed your mind about the game's consistency um I mean like it has to right like if the last area is a bit weak then you know it's not as consistent as it could be but I don't think it's that that bad of a mark against the game the final areas of those games are kind of hard to get right not only is he unarmed there's a lot of repeated enemies there and it just felt kind of like a victory lap I think it would be better if the game if it wasn't in the game maybe I'm not sure Liza P cream stream. I'm not sure. It was a cream game. I don't know. If, not sure if it was a if it was a cream stream. Okay, you can just run and jump, right? <laughs> no, you have to. You have to, <laughs> you have to wall jump, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I think I see why there wasn't a Sakura video. See, you blew your load there, Chatter. We didn't even combat yet, and you said it. You fell from my cunning trap. Oh no. Well, this sucks. This does not usually happen. I hope we're gonna be okay. You can, like, jump off the wall here, and then you can hang on. There you go, see? I knew you could do it. Sound okay? Too loud? Too quiet? Japanese dub, please? Nope. I played it, uh, this area earlier today, by the way. I'm not just, like, a god at remembering the beginning of the game. 
It took me a lot of fiddling earlier to get to, to adjust to it. So this is where I died. I went down here and I was like, okay, time to learn how to parry again, right? Ran past this guy, walked up to this guy, and was like, here I go, I'm gonna parry, I know how to do that, and just ate shit. Alright, we're not eating shit this time, but I fucked up. Oh, oh no! So in this game, you need to parry just ever so slightly before they hit you, but in Lies of P, you need to like parry as they hit you, is the thing I think. So it's a little bit of an adjustment period going from the different games. And we died. We're dead. Is it Reddit to use the healing pellets early on? You can parry even later in Lies of P. Yeah, you can parry like almost as they're hitting you in Lies of P. Whereas in this game, you need to time it. Like a little bit before. Sekiro's parry is easier to do. I think Sekiro's parry is easier to do. However, it's more punishing if you fuck it up. I one shot this guy when I played before. Fucking hell. I hate all the tutorial messages that pop up in this game. It's possibly my biggest gripe of the game, is all the shit that appears on the screen. I'm going pellets, chat. I'm going pellets. I might kill him if we use pellets. Because my gameplay has been so stellar so far, right? Here we go. I'm using the pellets. Do, 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 do. Alright, you don't have a Mercury counter yet, Joe. You don't have a Mercury counter, so if you're gonna fucking parry his his forward stab, you have to do it perfectly, or you just need to avoid it. You don't have a Mercury counter, late Joe. Don't dodge into his fucking stab. You don't have a Mercury counter. You Use a pellet. Okay, run away. Get her sense back. Whoops. Should have jumped straight up. Okay. What do I do for that? I can't remember. Now, if I don't have a Mercury counter, what do I do? Do I have to perfectly deflect it? I'm pressing square X to fucking like use the pellets right now, like in, like a numpty. Eat the pellet. 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 All right, here we go. Yeah. I'm so bad. I'm 
so fucking bad. God fucking damn it. I was good at this game before. I'm spamming. Look at me spamming, man. Look at me spamming to get there. All right, we got one death blow. All right, cool. We got one. All right, that's good. At least we got one. That's respectable. I cannot. Shit. He did a sweep that time instead of the fucking stab. So if you beat him, uh, someone distracts you and then he cuts off your arm. There's a slightly different cutscene. What you call your you. You're quite other there's one to skip to. Rogue mod. I mean technically I got past the fight chat. Are you sure it's a rouge of mod? Okay, so, um, I am of the opinion that Sekiro is a difficulty sandwich. I think that some of the hardest encounters are at the beginning of the game, especially before you have certain unlocks, and then it gets pretty easy for a while, with some hard moments here and there, and then it gets really hard again at the end. I think Chained Ogre is pretty trolly and kind of sucks as a fight. There are a couple of um, general fights around here that are pretty hot, pretty tough. Um, Butterfly, depending on when you do her, is actually a pretty hard fight. Uh, the first Butterfly was the first boss I killed in this game when I first played it at launch. <laughs> I count Chained Ogre as a, as a mini boss. Butterfly was the first boss that I killed, and the second boss I killed was uh, was the monk. So I had a fun time, let me tell you. I was on Butterfly for a long fucking time. It also meant that I didn't have to really properly learn Gyobu because when I fought Gyobu the first time, I had the weapon upgrade and a health upgrade from doing the memory part first. I don't know if I could do Butterfly again like that. That was really hard. Oh shit. Okay, where more? Is there important pickups around here? Sorry, I'm kind of nervous actually, chat. I'm sorry. Please bear with me. the fuck are those? Touch Remnant. I don't recognize those. What are those? It's pretty satisf satisfying to kill trash mobs in this game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And the movement is just so good in this game too. Okay, can you get a stealth kill against this guy? I can't remember. Did you ever play Ghost of Zumigi? I did not know. Whoops!
one fuck up and you're just fucking eating shit. Phew, alright. Uh, let's go back and upgrade the healing flask. Go see Emma. Can finally breathe easier. This isn't even the hardest enemy in here. The big, slow moving ogre guy is trolly as hell. Usually I die to him every single playthrough. I never Who are you? My name is Sometimes I die to the drunkard in front of Butterfly than I do Butterfly. Is this a good yeah, now? Such a if, if it's a bad one, nice. please I Goodbye. Most overrated butterfly color? Uh yellow. I can kill Ishin first try now, but Ogre Dude still kills me. Yeah, Ogre is trolly as hell. There are certain fights in this game that if you try to deflect, you're just gonna get fucked. And <laughs> but the game wants you to deflect a lot, so you have to like feel, feel that out. Can we dive him? Where is he? Oh, you can stealth kill him! Oh shit, I didn't know that! I learned something new today. No, no hit? No? Oh, okay. Alright, cool, thank you. Fuck. Where's the gun guy? Where's the cock? Oh shit! There's two here? Has there always been two here? Oh fuck, rumbled. Let's go the other way. Love the movement in this game. Oh, I love this game, chat. I love this game. It's actually pretty rare that we stream a game that I've already played before, huh? And I like know where to go and I can talk to chat about what's going on and what I like and what I don't like.
did you know Cure Charm Demon Bell? I, I mean, like, you already know the answer to that question. Why are you asking? Sekiro Joseph plays it twice, yeah. Don't have a curie counter. Pardon me. Right, sometimes this guy can aggro in the fight, so we want to kill him. All right, here we go. I'm gonna die here. All right, so you don't want to really parry this guy because he does his fucking grab attack and his fucking bullshit. He's just gonna throw me again. <laughs> I hate this fight so much. Dead. I hate this fight so much. So much I hate this fight. Good thing it's only repeated three times. Well, later you have so much damage you can just kind of brute force it. Hit me! Hit me! God damn it. This room, the next room after it, and the part with Spearman Steve are like some of the hardest areas in the whole entire game. The first time you meet a Spearman Steve, it, 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 you might not have a McCurry counter, so that's even harder. But like, even if you do, like that whole section with Spearman Steve is just fucking insane. Like, the, the three of the hardest areas in the game are right at the start. Alright, let's cheese him. What? Alright, that was bullshit. Like, ev evasively, I have to play, man. <laughs> it's the first mini boss. Come on, do an attack! Do an attack! Fuck. I don't want to side. Alright. 
For a game all about parrying, you have to dodge everything this guy does, which is great, especially after one hour trying to kill drill parrying dead. Yeah, I don't like this boss at all. Can you jump the grab? I don't think you can. Can you? I've never tried. Can you jump it? This guy or the bull, the bull's really easy. Or at least uh, the last time I killed the bull, the bull I had an easy time with him. The bull is also parryable. Yeah, if you parry the bull's charge, you get a lot of free damage. The bull is, is pretty easy for that. What do you do for that one? Do you do you parry it? I'm so happy because of that grab. See, this is what I was afraid of. This is embarrassing. It's the first mini boss. I hate this boss. I hate this boss so much. Well, I'm having fun. I'm coming. I'm coming. game not have stamina? No, it doesn't. See the yellow bar in the bottom? That's the equivalent of stamina in this. I'll explain that in a second. How the fuck? I don't think so. Do headless now? How many people can do headless right at the start like that?
So, uh, Sekiro doesn't have a stamina system, so you can run and jump and dodge and attack as much as you possibly want. However, it does have, uh, I don't know what they call it on the player, like, like your stagger meter. In the bottom left, uh, sorry, in the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll see a yellow bar fills up the same way it does for enemies. So every single time that you fail to deflect, uh, perfectly deflect the attack, actually, you know what, even if you do perfectly deflect the attack, you get, you get your poise knocked down a little bit. Um, so, uh, that means they, sometimes you will might choose to run away from an enemy in the middle of a fight and get far away from them and hold your block state in order to regain your posture faster and then you can risk taking more blocks and, and fucking up uh, because if it caps out you get stunned. It's pretty minor though and sometimes you can just ignore it. And as you lower your health is, the slower it recovers, right? And it's the same for enemies. So sometimes you want to damage an enemy significantly before you start trying to build up their posture. Some enemies are different though. So there's kind of a flow in the fight sometimes where you don't want to go for deflections, you instead want to deal damage, you want to dodge and punish in order to get it, uh, to get them low and then you can maximize your posture damage that you do to them. It was I was told. The Worth knowing the posture never breaks your character. Yes, if you do perfectly deflect, you you will never have your posture broken, but if you perfectly deflect, you will still gain some posture damage a little bit. Mm. What is it What is it you know? Record. Where do you know? I found one. Yeah, but they put it. That's all. Mm. The more I give it to you. Yes. Good. Go. So the game does not have leveling up in terms of uh, stats. Instead, it has skills. You can acquire skills through through experience points that you get for killing enemies. Uh, it also has prayer beads and memories. So memories come from main bosses and they increase your attack power permanently. Uh, prayer beads, you need four, like heart pieces. After every four you find, usually you find these in hard to reach locations or from mini bosses and you get extra health. And also I think you get extra posture from it too. So that's how you uh, you level up in this game. It's, it's very um, direct. There's no fucking around with different starts and everything like that. And this is the skill tree. It's a little overwhelming. Um, I think we want to get two points to get Makiri counters as fast as we possibly can. Do we want to farm for that? I can't remember. Do we want to just farm real quick and get some? If I hadn't died, I would have had enough for, for this shit. The next boss, um, there's a mini boss right after the Chained Ogre that I think is easier than Chained Ogre, but is still pretty hard at this stage of the game. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but we'll try. Does he have a, a thrust? Do you want to buy anything from this guy down here, chat? I can't remember. Does he sell anything good? What time paradox. Uh, yeah, sure. No, he doesn't. Okay, he doesn't have anything yet. What's a good Star Souls like? I just spent five hours not being the first mini boss in Liza P. Uh, Dark Souls 1 is a pretty good place to start, I think. Don't come, don't come here, don't come here, don't come here. I wanna kill I wanna kill everyone before I fight you. No! Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. Don't see me. Go away. Go away. Oh shit!
don't have fuck. Sorry, we got him. Oh man. I don't have the mid-air deflection, is what I said there, or, what, or was about to say. Okay, we have a carry counter now, that's good. So, uh, if you ever play this game, Makiri Counter is, I would say, like, you have to get this. You can't beat the game without this. Or if you do, it's a challenge run. You have to get Makiri Counter. It's a core part of the game. Uh, and then after that, if you want some help, I believe that the best thing you can get possibly is up here. So go up here first, and then go here, and it's it's one of these two, isn't it? That is, you get a little healing every single time you kill and blow an enemy. This gives you huge amount of sustain going through the levels. It's one up here. Like, these matter quite a lot. Oh, I didn't heal. Oh, I have healing. You ready, chat? Hey, dude. Did I get to forget to suck up all the coins from that battle? Fuck, I keep forgetting to do that. That's another one of my criticisms of Sekiro. I don't think you should have to do that. I think it should just happen. First time I played this, right before the red showed up, I'm like, oh god, the red's gonna show up and we're gonna stab his eye, and then it happened and I was like, oh shit! I can't believe they locked an essential move like a Kiri counter behind a skill tree. Oh, damn, Chatter! Oh, good point! Yeah! That's even more essential than than the dodge roll on the floor and shit. Oh, no! Oh, no! So this is what Makiri counter does. He's gonna run at me and stab me, and I'm gonna jump on his spear. Fucking awesome. Oh man! How's it going, dude? These, these guys can be a little early. Now, if you don't know this game, or you've never played this game, you're about to think that chat is about to go absolutely crazy. But don't worry. I feel bad about killing this guy. Liza P, yay or P for Joe? Abs a big yay. Very, very good. Okay, so I'm not the best at this fight, because I've never had to properly learn it. Because usually when I get here, I have a memory. So let's see how it goes. Should be okay. 
All right, here we go. Say the line, chat. Oh, I cut it off. This isn't going well. Oh, he died! Oh, shit. Oh, we died in Yobu! No! Five hits in a row? Shameful, I know. Shameful. So, Dragon Rot doesn't matter, right? Like, it doesn't really change much? So you can say Gyo, Gyo, but you can't say Nya? I mean, I hear him say his name. I thought I said- I thought I said Nagas right now. Don't I? Do I not? I thought I do. That on purpose so we could say it again. There you go. That might have been the first time I've ever died in this fight chat. This is gonna be a second one, maybe? Oh, what the fuck? So see how my yellow bar is capped? I can run away and I can hold LB and see how it regains faster. I know you may you may you may feel like oh that doesn't make sense. It should like not holding block should make it go up faster, but no. It's like regaining your stance a little bit. Dead again! Holy shit! I need to hear one more time. Oh, I died for you. It's, it's fine. I read it before I read it loud. I'm trying to burst them down too fast. I need to respect them more and deflect them. Did you ever play the boss rush mode? No, I've never played the boss rush mode. The reason why I'm fighting him this way is because usually I just burst him down. Because <laughs> I come here with memories and I, or a, a memory from Butterfly and just like... Alright, this is fun. Right, 
There we go. Spear in this game, they usually um, they jump up on the roof somehow and make him run off the uh, the cliff. Okay. Yo, but what are you doing? Okay, I have never seen that move before. Did they change his AI a little bit in some patches? I've never seen him look so derpy before running into walls. I have never seen him act like that way before. No, his attacks are fine. I'm not saying that he was acting different. That's why I died. No, no, no. Like, I've, I'm just fucking playing like shit. I've never seen him run into walls like that before, ever. So we killed the boss, so now we have a memory. So we can go over here and we can upgrade our sword. And this actually matters quite a bit. Uh, so we can... Act so first time I played this game, I thought that enhanced attack power and then confront memory meant you were going to do like a harder version of the rematch with, with the boss. And then honestly, I was a little disappointed when it just does this. And there you go. Now you have more... More attack power. Oh, I haven't said thank you to people in a while. Hold on one second. Oh, it doesn't like being alt tabbed. Thank you, Orange Orangutan, for the reset. Thank you very much. Did I say thank you to Apollo Two Gaming? After Pi or Yanis? I think I did, but just in case, thank you, Paulo 2 Gaming. Thank you, Orange Orangutan, again. Thank you, Bad Fetus, for the resub. Thank you, Dalmek, for the bits. A farewell to Chat and Joe. Alas, I may be, must become a VOD boy, Sailor Dalmek. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doubt Degree, for the resub. Thank you, Jackie O, for the resub. Speen? What's going on? Jackie O, for, this, for the resub. Thank you, Big Bill69420. Nice for the resub. Oh, I can see OBS. Oh, why is it doing that? Because I alt tabbed out. All right, I'm almost done. One second. Thank you, Big Bill, 69420. And thank you, Eticus, for the hype chat uh, with uh, the Makiri counter um, uh, bit. Thank you. It's very true. And yet, they'll criticize Liza P for it. How curious. Okay, this guy has something. A pellet? Oh, uh, it's a gourd seed. Okay, can you sell the cash for the same amount that it's worth? 500? It, you can, right? I still don't have enough. Now I do. 
Where you find the departure. Go ahead. Buy an offering. Why are you playing Sakura? Why not? It's a good game. For no reason at all, we're going to listen to this guy talk. Mm. Another rat. Ah, but those eyes. A starving wolf. Before I kill you, tell me your name. Tell me your name! <laughs> no name to give. You should know me all the same. You die nameless, with no one to mourn you. However, your left arm, a prosthetic shinobi arm, it reminds me of... <laughs> That's it. A one-arm wolf. I like it. Which means Sekiro. That is what I shall name you. Who are you? <laughs> I am the Tengu of Ashina. Come, Sekiro. Care to hunt some rats with me? What? Rats have snuck into Ashina. Scurrying about your name. It see. What'll it. Very well. Uh, you're... What is that? Don't give you. Oh, you, you can open this? What? Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. Now we can get some more health. I believe. Right? I think we have one more. I think we have... I think that's four? No? Alright, how do you kill the little hack guys without the axe, chat? I think last time I played this game I found a way to kill the shield dudes without an axe. But how do you kill the hack guys without an axe? Carefully? Oh god, I'm not a careful gamer. Okay, so... Posture and vitality up, this matters a lot. Like, it, it, there's a huge difference from where you start and where you end. You can still beat the game without doing it, lots of people have, but, well, I don't know if lots of people have. Oh, shit. Oh, I didn't rest! Oh, no! One second. Excuse me. I'm in the wrong area. Eh, let's just kill him. We'll die. I thought I would have gotten a killing wall on that guy. Best worst boss in this game? Uh, the worst boss, if you're kind of main bosses, like unironically chained over at the beginning. I think that boss is stupid. I don't think I'm particularly good at that boss, as you saw earlier, but even, like, that aside, I think that boss is dumb for this kind of gameplay. Especially that early. If we're talking main bosses, uh... Like, I, th I think they're all good still. Maybe Butterfly is the worst boss. I don't know, Butterfly's kind of whatever, but it's still, like, good. But compared to the other ones. Alright, can we stealth kill? And that's just one. Oh fuck. Alright. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Ishin, you can do it yourself, alright? I fucking hate fighting these.
Let's just go back. Uh, let's go get our healing gourd. And the worst boss are the headless. Oh, if the headless count, then definitely the headless, yeah. So yeah, I'm barely into this, and I can already tell you that I'm having um, more fun than I think with Liza P's combat. But Liza P's combat is still pretty good. Or pretty good is underselling it. It's very good, but I think I prefer this combat system to Liza P's. And also the movement system and getting around is really good in this. I love just running around like like crazy. Question, question, what do you mean? You're also much more familiar with this to be I mean, like, I died to Gyobu, Boulder, twice. In this game, sometimes it's about speed less than sneaking, right? You just run up and, and just fucking, like, stab him, right? Like, it's... Yeah, there we go. Okay. enemies. It's really hard to see when they're even attacking you, because their heads, their hats block it. So this quest is pretty important. I've never not done it, so I don't know if there's an opportunity to get this later, but if you do this quest, uh, this guy gives you like a whole ass skill tree. Uh, the skills on it aren't very good. I don't use them. I don't. Maybe there's one later in that, later on that I'm forgetting. But uh, it's mostly about the holding your sword up in the air and doing a big fucking attack, right? So normally I don't use them. Jo Why am I being Joe dot dotted? There's some good passives on. It. Are there? I I forget what the passives are. He gives posture passives. Yeah, maybe the passives are really good, and I don't remember what they are. Alright, let's see if we can one-shot the bull. I used to die to the bull all the time, and then I figured out that you can parry his charge, and since then it's been better. But again, it's been a while since I've played it. Alright, can we get a stealth kill on one of these big guys here so it's not a Ornstein Smo? Or Smo and Smo. <laughs> Shit. 
sloppy, but it's a kill. Let's, we take those. Mr. Anderson, what happens when the bar and the bond gets filled up? Do you die or your, is your pose broken? Your pose is broken, yes. Uh, it's actually not that punishing. There are plenty of bosses that um, it'll only happen at the end of the boss combo, and then the boss will just stare at you while you get a chance to get your posture back. It's very, very common that you will, like, fuck up as the, as the combo goes on. At least it's common for me. Yes, let's attack me instead of the bull. Let's see that. Be good. Nope! is bullshit. Some might even say it's flaming bullshit. Sometimes he does the uh, the charge move where he rears down more often and you can get more uh, deflects on him sooner. And the deflects really build up. Because if you get if you deflect that you get some free damage on him.
always like how uh, he puts his hand on his on his head, like he's saying sorry. Maybe you're because you're just replaying over stream, but do you use revives on normal replays? It seems like something you would not normally use. I absolutely use the revives. Yep, the revives are a core part of the system. One of the reasons why attack damage is so high in this game is because of the revives. I don't remember what this person does. I'm sure you are all aware already. This coming battle will determine the fate of all Ashina. We go now! Fucking hell! Okay, you know what? You know what? You know what? Round two. No! So you're a good guy in Sucker? You're absolutely uh, a good guy. I have never fucked that up. I have never fucked that up. I would be the worst speedrunner. I have never fucked that up. <sighs> I don't do well with nerfs. I'm sure you are all aware already. This coming battle will determine the fate of all Ashina. We go Usually I'm better at killing these guys too. So the cool thing about the death blow system is that it kinda acts like an execution in Doom Eternal. In that you um it's like a little pause on the fight. Wait, what? Oh, was that posture broken? Like a glory, yeah, like a glory kill, yeah. It gives you, a t uh, gives you a second to to like reset the fight a little bit. Was I posture broken there? Because I hit forward and uh, dashing it didn't happen. Maybe I was posture broken. Have you tried to play Sekiro with sure without uh, Kuro's cars charm? No, I haven't played it with that. No. Oh, you move! Alright, there's one more, isn't there? Where is he? Fuck. Is he dead? Oh, it's just me and him now, okay.
So one of the most consistent fuck-ups I do in this game is that I, uh, when I dodge over uh, an enemy sweep or jump over an enemy sweep, I dodge too far forward or far away from them and I, and I don't get my Google slot, which really sucks. Oh, that's bad, I almost got him. And I'm dead. Oh man, I was doing well there too. Why is the other revive crossed out? Because if you get a killing blow on uh, an enemy, including a boss, if you take one away, their killing blows, uh, you get it back. You can earn one back. I'm sure you are all aware already. This coming battle will determine the fate of all our have you played or heard of Sifu? I've heard of it, I haven't played it. Why didn't it work that time? Was it far enough above him? Oh my god. Killing Blow has to be on a boss, I think, for you to get back, right? It doesn't count for, for little enemies. How was life with Pete? Really good. Have you played Shadow Mortar, Shadow War? I have not, no. Hello, chat. Just got here. Why is Joe playing Sekiro? Because he felt like embarrassing himself today. I'm sure Had to make the uh, even the stakes way. after um, killing that boss first try yesterday. Okay, he moved. Oh, he sees me. What the fuck? We already got killing ball on him.
pretty tough. Pretty tough. I don't remember him capping out my fucking, uh... My posture that quickly before. Holy crap. It's like one fucked up the deflect and I'm like, eating shit already. Alright, where to now? Oh, shit. Uh, do you want to go into... We probably want to go get the axe, right? Do you want to go to the... The Nightmare Realm, or...? Or the... Time travel? I'd like some healing for this guy. Oh, what the? <laughs> Alright, how many skills do we have? How many skill points? Where are they? Three. Uh, we want to go up here, don't we? Do we want to get run and slide? Uh, suppressed. No, I think we want to. So here's the other. Here's the tree that we got from uh, that guy that wanted us to kill the rats. I think some of these are good, but I never, I never use Itchy Manji. Mirror deflection is good. I want that. And you get Breath of Life Light, which is uh, why I keep thinking I'm gonna get heals back whenever I killing blow somebody, but I don't. Go ahead. By an offering. Okay, you have a prayer prayer bead. Can I sell everything to you? Because I'm not going to use any of this shit. Divine grass, yeah, sell it. Sell the sugar, sell the sugar, sell the wealth. What does this do? Is that important, chat? I can't remember. I don't remember ever using any of these. Oh, whatever, let's sell them. We don't have enough money? Still don't have enough money. Where you find it, whatever. Wealth gives you a, a coin bonus. Oh, does it? Okay, ten coin bonus. Is that enough? That might be five hundred, isn't it? Was it twelve hundred or fourteen hundred? Ah, it's fourteen hundred. We need two hundred. Hold on, maybe there's coins down here. Nope, the dead have no coins. I never noticed that before. Hold on, before we die to this guy, we can get some coins we can get, because I think you lose uh lose coins when you die, don't you? I probably did notice it, I just don't remember. Right, that is that is not enough coins. Let's go farming around, because I wanna get that uh that bead. You can rip the armor off with the spear. That's cool. Okay, is that enough? It's a hundred, isn't it? No, we need fifty more. Oh, 
Nope, it's not enough soul. There we go, that's enough. There is fall damage, by the way, if you do fall enough from high enough. Um, like, not only will a pit kill you, obviously, but there is fall damage even if there is no pit. It's pretty hard to trigger, though. I don't know why I'm explaining it, like, people haven't played this game, but there must be someone in chat who hasn't played it. What does the mask fragment do? I can't remember what that does. Do you need that for like a secret or something? How many do we have? I think we have two beats now, right? Alright, let's see if we can kill this guy. Are these just normal humans, but big, or supernatural stuff? There's some supernatural stuff in this. I'm not sure if this guy's supernatural, if he's just big. Today, uh, should be over soon. Should we go and see if we can try and kill Jinich Jinichiro? Good old Genny. I don't know if I can. We have three memory, uh, three pair bees. Usually, I have another memory before I go and kill him. Maybe I can get him. We'll get another mem uh, prayer beat on the way too. Did you kill the seven spears guy? No, we didn't go in that area yet. Ooh, a 
Bird Seed. Open! Open! Open the fuck! Whoa, what happened over there? Do you ever do a challenge run such as New Game plus 7 Charmless Demon Bell? I mean, I'm struggling to do the base game right now, so probably not. Fuck, rolled into it. Wow! Wow! I'm wowing it how bad I am. I'm not wowing it how fast he is. Cheeky hit. Oh, fuck. He does more than that. I forgot. You motherfucker! I don't think I've ever seen him do that punch. Joe's uh, seeing some of these things. I know, right? I must have seen it. What probably happened is I probably saw most of these things on my first playthrough, and since then, when I go through it, it's like I know how to get through it faster. And now that I'm, it's been so long and I'm fucking rusty as hell, I'm seeing all the new stuff. All right. Oh, uh, am I gonna get my, my fucking? Uh, I used to be so good at this fight. Face me. Don't put him in the door. That's cheating. Not bad, not bad. Couple spams there, but not bad. He does a sweep sometimes. Oh, I didn't get my fucking healing back. I would fucking be done the fight by now. There it is. Fuck, it's so Whoa, what was that? Oh, this is crap. He, does he know? I 
I can get him. <coughs> I think I can get him. He always follows it up with a soup. Nah, he can do a, a thrust. Sometimes he mixes it up. Face me. Shit. <laughs> Fuck, deserved. Deserved. Was I? No, no, no. Fuck. Fuck. All right, one more try, and I have to stop. We're over time. Wow, this slice of puke game looks great. Did I not change the the game to uh, to Sakura underneath? I can't change the title, chat. Can I? Maybe I can. Face me. Shit. Oh my god, I'm terrible, chat. I'm fucking terrible. I'm terrible. You know what's even worse is that I'm terrible and I know I'm terrible now because I know what I was before. <laughs> like when you're new, you're like, oh, okay, I'm learning. But now I'm fucking terrible. So see how it's harder than Lies of P that the punishment, like you can die so fucking fast, like fucking one thing up and you're like so fucked, whereas in Lies of P you can fuck up quite a few times. But it's also faster on um, all the movements you can do, all the inputs you can do rather. What? Gotta revive back. Alright, run away. Okay, now he can do the sweep after he jumps up.
think I have time to heal, right? I think. Impressive, Shinobi of the Divine Air. You deserve better. I think I have time. Would you not answer? He always opens with the forward thrust, and then he does lightning. Heresy. I think. I think I have time to 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 heal. Sorry, we killed him. I'm not the boss anymore. I am not the boss anymore. John Sabanis. It took me fucking like five tries! Do you know how many times I've killed this fucking boss? You were victorious. Anyway, I'm way over time. But you know what? That kid Neil has been hell all day. So what's your conclusion on uh, P versus Sekiro on uh, on Perry? Is P Perry broken? It's not broken, not at all. I want to play more now. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just play more. Maybe I'll just mute the microphone and just keep playing. I can keep playing. I just can't keep talking. All right, see you later. I will see you. Um. I don't know when. October twenty third. I think it is October twenty third. For Alan Wake one. So excited. But we're playing it for Alan Wake 2, which is a new a new game. A new game. Anyway, see you later. Have a good one. Final drink of water. See you later, chat.